All right, it's nine o'clock. We're gonna get started. Here's uh, the opening of Chrono Trigger. The SNES Classic uh. kind of got Shadow announced very recently, and I guarantee this will be, if there's only one RPG on there, we will get this one. Mm. You think this over FF6, even? Absolutely, this over FF6, because it's independent. You're not required, uh. you don't feel motivated to play any of the others necessarily. The only JRPG I feel is more likely is Earthbound, because Nintendo uh, owns that. Yeah. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that is the only response to this opening. Oh, here we go. This, yeah, I love this game. I, oh. I, you know, I, I was late to this one given, you know, the, the history of, of Nintendo, the Nintendo franchise and whatnot. I, I didn't play this until high school. Really? But, oh yeah, but even then, like, I think I consider this game to be the the gateway into my realizing the possibility that games could be art, you know. Wow. Mhm. Mm I love that that opening. I don't even know what what to call it really. Ostinato kind of pattern. It just yeah, sort yeah. of to me represents like ticking clock and yeah. it, the the repetition of it just reminds you of time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see everything. It's good to me, yeah. We will. Yeah, yeah, Dana. I think it's interesting We're that we're releasing like, balloons. The, the the music that you hear in the beginning is not like a title theme. It's just right. a, it's just a, it's it's like incidental music, you know. Mm. Right. You don't really get the theme of the game until much later. Right. Right. Yeah, I haven't thought about that. This first real track of music we hear. Is one of the great Morning, sunrise sunlight. themes in music. I absolutely love this theme and the opening yeah. of the curtains. That da 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 da, that like the it, rising gesture. <laughs> oh, hey, percussive event, aka Kelsey. So one of my friends from college is in the chat, which is awesome. Oh, one neat. Of my buddy, one of my buddies from the percussion studio that I studied in. Cool. I, I, for a moment, I thought you meant a percussive event in the track, and I'm like, that doesn't happen. <laughs> I know, I was like, that's actually the opposite. Percussion is what makes this so, yeah. you know, interesting. <laughs> so, Aww. there's something about this, like, arpeggiated bass, or, uh, accompaniment pattern that to me is just like, we're safe, we're home, we're in major key. Yeah. This is very oh. town music. Up, oh, oh, oh. and now we're in the <laughs> Millennial Fair. I've Sorry, I jumped ahead. Nice. Do you guys want to go back out to the town, or do you want to hear it when we get yeah. to the trial? We'll hear it later. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. We should play the game. We should, we should experience the music as you would experience it. Okay, right? okay. Exactly. We're going to hear so much of repetition. Something anyway. very interesting I want to point out mechanically. You cannot have Marley bump into you. You can see her running back and forth. Right. Which, which Fs you over for the ah. trial. So here's the question, Ryan. Are you going to do everything good? No, it doesn't matter anyway. Or are you going to like steal the old man's lunch? It oh. does matter because okay. you get bonus gear if you do everything correctly. So I'm going to do it right. <laughs> I also I also just like morally want you to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's important to me. The, the chime of that bell is a really beautiful sample. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't know if that was. Uh, I'm. I'm not uh, quite as familiar with the capabilities of the SNES sound chip to know. Was that just uh, one of the embedded timbres, or was that an actual sample? I they, like late Super I, Nintendo is capable of actual samples, and of yeah. North American releases, this is the best quality sound of any of them. Yeah. There are a couple Japan yeah, only that. releases that are obviously better. Uh, Tales of Fantasia has a full vocal track, for instance. Wow. Mm. Yeah. I. I feel like. Based, based on my percussion ears, I think that might have been a synthesized bell. Um, yeah, it did sound it didn't sound real, but it's a it's yeah. a really beautiful timbre they got. It's, yeah, it's a great yeah. sound. I mean, I, th I think about like when I hear like the, the the percussive writing that like Disaster Piece does in his scores, which is yeah. Really nice. When I hear like just a really well designed sound, you know. Mm. I mean, there is a voice sample in this party better. track. For what it's worth, you can hear the yeah in the a minute. Yeah. yeah. Of course. And the Wait, I'm really too. impressed that you got all eight of those 
are these sodas <laughs> that you're chugging? Those are, um, I was always terrible at that. I, was, I'm, I can only get four or five at the best. Yeah, unless I was using one of those turbo controllers, and then I could do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I am not, for what it's worth. Well, then you're just good at this. Yay. Um, so should we talk about music? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, um, one, one of the things I like about Yasunori Matsuda's scores in general is that you basically have, like, two different styles that he really concentrates on. It's either going to be, like, the sort of jazz fusion-y thing that the main theme of this, this game is, or the very folky um like um acoustic sound that we get in millennial fair mm -hmm. this is more i think yeah. this is more exact than the soundtrack to chrono cross which had more ex uh more advanced sample possibilities but mm -hmm. um like you you get either like european folk or or like like edgy jazz or J japanese influence like jazz basically so I think like Secret of the Forest when that comes up is going to be mm. our like edgy like jazz stuff, you know? Yeah. Yep. Oh. So this one is uh just basically drip sounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I can identify drip, drip. that. I'm gonna wait for everybody else to catch up so I know that I'm right. I'm hoping it's Vix the right guy, right? Man. Vix and Wedge. Vix and Wedge? Oh! Yeah! They're like oh, always in early that. Squaresoft. Somewhere yeah. early in the game, they always pop up. I love that fanfare, by the way. Yeah, there's a couple fanfares embedded in the soundtrack. So that's another thing that uh, we won't get to access necessarily, but there's a lot of tracks uh, that were sort of discovered upon the ROM dumps that people did mm. when they, they pulled out the SPC files. Yeah, there's two there's extra tracks number, and they're both fantastic. Number. There's the there's an extra battle theme. There right. is singing yeah. mountain, which is one of my favorite video game pieces ever written, uh, ever, <laughs> which we can't <laughs> access. And then there's a, there's another fan. I want to say there's another fanfare, maybe. Like, a, like I just think you're right ones. about that. Oh really? I do want to apologize for not oh. using the version with singing mountain restored. It turns out streaming a Nintendo DS game is really hard. <laughs> That's okay. okay. And you had to trade like some easeability we can sing it. instead. I can set out the sheet music, and we can we can all choose a part, and we'll we'll just sing "Singing Mountain." How's that? Oh <laughs> gosh! <laughs> yeah, be, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a great singer, but I could I could handle a baritone part. You know, <laughs> I can hold my own. <laughs> I was gonna say I could handle a soprano part if I need to. You know? like, and <laughs> yes, bassoon dude, they did use those bonus tracks for the extra content in the DS version. Yeah. But yeah, so right. what, do, what do we really have? We talked about the hand claps, we talked about the ha! Huh! Huh. <laughs> Very communal. That flute is like very, very not professional, but good amateur sound flute. Like a penny <laughs> whistle instead of an orchestral flute. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Very much like sort of like the bard, the medieval bard flute. <laughs> yeah, it sounds very Renaissance fair. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's like, well, we're at the Millennial Fair, you know. So it's right. Like, it's it's a. Yeah. And what year is this? It's supposed to be like the year one thousand. This is one thousand, even though we have like yeah. laser pistols and teleport machines or whatever. <laughs> yeah. This is a Millennial Fair where they celebrate being on your cell phone and Snapchat and all these. <laughs> That's right, the uh, Millennial yeah, Fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, participation trophies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Hashtag millennial fair. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Grown. Throw the switch. Before we get to the theme that's coming up, I really like how meaty this sound effect is.
See, that's a meaty sound effect. <laughs> so we get the buzzing, right? The low hum of the equipment, and we get the 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 creepy pulsing over top. <laughs> yeah. The pizzicato strings there really make it extra creepy. I think it plays into a trope that that's associated with horror and I things. Should, I, should, I should say that. Uh, the viol- like if you put that on an actual violin, it's pretty high. Which oh, yeah. it's a pretty high register of uh, like you're way up on the E string for it to to play it mm. properly. So if it, it it's sort of weird. Uh, a lot of pizzicato parts don't tend to be way up in orchestral music, so it, it, it's right. bizarre to me. Like just mechanically, when I you know my my muscle memory is picturing playing this, and it's like that's. Yeah. That's not something and I'd encounter. Similarly, so Doug, isn't that xylophone uh, tremolo thing also kind of associated with the macabre mm. in music? Yeah, that happens a lot. I think it's like, I don't know, like, there have been so many tropes about, like, xylophone being, like, you know, you, you see, like, xylophone getting associated with, like, graveyards and stuff like that when, like, like caricatures, like, play, like, bone xylophones and stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, it's a very, it's a, it's... Now it's like just an instrument that's full of anxiety, um, at least within this context. Um, whereas originally, like the function of the xylophone within an orchestra was to be a punctuating timbre, you know, something that could cut through the uh, the rest of the ensemble. Oh god, here we are. Here's the. Oh uh, yeah, I was gonna say we're at the main theme, and then remind me, yeah. I've got another thing on xylophones and marimba. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> uh, the main theme of this game is one of my favorite video game themes of all time. It's beautiful, but I will say this particular iteration of the theme has kind of a, a nasal quality to it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. The brassiness yeah, that, really does that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but even even for that, it, it, it's always sounded particularly nasal to me. I love oh, the yeah. string hits and. Yeah. I'm just seeing in the chat, Percussive Event has never played this game yet. This is a must-play. I mean, this is, yeah. this is, I think, one of the one of the greatest video games ever made, period. Yeah. And it's Agreed. something Absolutely. that you, you learn so much about, like, great game design from this game, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Also, yeah, Grant Kirkhope has done a number on the xylophone in the marimba as a result of <laughs> Donkey Kong and Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's the, that is a great the, the, thing. Yeah, he's into that. Right, One so last thing before the battle theme is that I love the timpani sampling in that main theme. <laughs> yeah. Like, the sound of the timpani is glorious oh, yeah. and resonant. Yeah. yeah. Battle! <laughs> oh my gosh, we're going yeah. quick! <laughs> so, for those of you actually who might not be familiar with this game, and I feel like maybe we sort of skimmed over this, the music in this game is written by Yasunori Mitsuda, who is honestly like most well known for this game as well as Chrono Cross. Um, and th- this game was originally, des- I think at first it was supposed to be Nobu Ematsu who was the music lead, and I think he did some work on this, but he ended up sort of, sort of like handing off a lot of a lot of the work on this to Yasunori mm-hmm. Mitsuda, mm-hmm. who wrote the music that's the most memorable, certainly I think. Yeah, uh, as the story goes, I think Mitsuda actually worked so hard, so many hours on this game during development, that he handed off the last couple tracks to Umatsu because he worked himself sick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. I'm not surprised. Do you know what tracks are by Umatsu? Or they, I don't think that we have any any I, true sense of that, right? Yeah, Isla's theme sure. is Umatsu, I'm pretty sure, oh, as is all okay. the 65 million, like the caveman theme. Okay. Oh, I yes, love, yeah, I, I, I know stuff. that. Okay. I think it's in the official soundtrack actually does list who it does is. Does list? Okay. Oh, um, so I can look that I always up, listen but... to everything on, like, SBC original files, so... Oh, that's, that's super I, original. I, I never Not get quite. OSTs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, the way that I normally try to... The way that I feel like I can distinguish it whenever uh, listening to a soundtrack with uh, Yesenai Mitsudan is that he's always very particular about making sure he gets the seventh chords in there. <laughs> he really likes really likes his jazz chords. And, yes. Uh, yes. Wimatsu will be Absolutely. more likely to just to default to tertiary uh, chords. Uh huh. I'm gonna let this play for a minute. Oh, yes, yeah. please do. And I have a transcription of this one. Woo! 
<laughs> I, I'm not nearly. I'm not going to be as transcription happy with this game because Man, I don't have extra credit any to Dana. Uh, the reason I have a transcription of this one is that my high schoolers are going to be playing a yeah. couple of trigger oh. medleys on their next game recital in May. That's awesome. Let me pull it up real quick. Good, they should be. <laughs> this is standard rep as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. The rhythm here is very, very measured and even compared to the 1000 yeah. AD town theme. And it's yeah. to convey that older style. And it really does yeah. work, too. We'll stop and listen to the 1000 AD theme when I get back there in oh. 15 minutes or so. Yeah, the, the, it, we, we just already passed it, but um, the, the second... So this is like an AAB form, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the second A... I'm really, I really love the voice leading in there. If you pay attention, yes, yesterday Matsuda is not afraid to resolve the major third in like a five chord down to a minor seventh in the one. Um, he's it's like kind of a nerdy thing to say, but like I love the sound. I'm gonna have to listen for that. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. Let it play. Yeah, I'll let it cycle one more time. Yeah, it, it's in the yeah, it's so the, the the B of the theme is where instead of you where we, instead of the the pizzicato ostinato, right. you get just like long chords in the strings. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think it, the C sharp in the A major chord goes down to C natural in the D minor chord. Okay, so you'll see the medley is actually, it's at the bottom of the night, which also features heavy string pizzicato. Um, so the wind scene is in the middle, so it's actually on page two of my transcription. I really do like that resolution to the B theme. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to go onto the forest, and we're going to have to sit there as well, because God, I love that piece too. Okay, and I'm going to actually have to take a break. And Wait, oh, it's, it's <laughs> okay. Forest. Yeah, go for it. Is but Forest be Memories of Green? Because I think I've got that one, too. <laughs> oh, well, got in a fight. Hold on. <laughs> oh, no. This is something else. I love, I love the cyclone sound effect. I always have. It's like, it's like munchy. <laughs> oh yeah. That's a technique. I love all of these non-musical words we're using to describe sound effects. I love it. <laughs> Just like burbles. <laughs> Shout out Dr. Burbles, AKA William Gibbons. Oh, there you go, yeah. <laughs> that battle music is all about the bass until it's, it's like all, all about, about the organ. It's all about that bass, about that bass. It's really no all trouble. about that bass. No Megan Trainer crap. This is like what but it is. We talked about this even in our six Final Fantasy VI stream as well, but that's like your classic kind of prog rocky, like, you know, heavy electric bass sound yeah. and a lot of percussion. Like this is your classic battle trope here. Oh yeah, and this in this percussion, this like drum set line is great too. It's really like quite sophisticated actually, if you really listen to it. The stereo panning of the ostinato in the top register here mm -hmm. is really, really fantastic as mm. well. Yes. Ugh, so good. The melody, by the way, in the forest track itself, I'm just going to stop for a moment because this is the exit, uh, it it's a, will immediately draw you, but the percussion sounds fantastic here. It's like this amazing hand drum and a whole bunch of other awesome stuff. But I love the way it all comes together here. There's a sighing sound in uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. somewhere but in there. But I think it's meant to be like a bird or something. All the slides happening in the flute part. Exactly. Too. It's, yeah. The... Then we get this kind of new agey piano thing. <laughs> like a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, well, it's very 90s. Like, it's very... It is very 90s. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> way to describe <laughs> it. It's definitely 90s. Mystical. 
mystical 90s, like Enya. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes like the, you know, and Final Fantasy VI is, is more of like pure video game music that's sort of transcendent, but like Chrono Trigger, like Mitsuda really kind of also grasps, grasps like the 90s, I think, a lot. A lot more than I think Uematsu does. I think Mitsuda draws on a wider variety of styles, typically, too. You'd never listen to one of his games and think, oh, that's very Wagner, or oh, that's very video game orchestral. Right. Yeah, it's certainly less, less German, I think. Yeah. More popular music, like 20th century. Even this castle theme as we go in, this is not a German castle theme in the way that Final Fantasy mm -hmm. VI would have one. Right. It's almost like, um, like 19th century, uh, band music, uh, in, in the U.S. Like, mm. there's something about that percussion that reminds me of, like, patriotic, you know, Sousa March. <laughs> I don't know. For me, mm. the brass figure going, uh, bum, 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 really recalls that as well. Yeah. But then, we definitely have a snare in here, but we also still have this orchestral timpani, which of course is out of place in that rap. <laughs> At least the stuff that you're going to play like outdoors, you know, at a festival, you're not going to bring the timpani. <laughs> yeah, and the timpani, when it comes in, like, it dominates everything in percussion. Mm hmm Movie scores often do that too, it's worth pointing out, where they make ensembles that are just not possible. Right. I haven't analyzed this timpani. Is it too, is it too many notes to be a realistic timpani set? So that's one of my favorite mm. like video game things, is how much they use timpani it's all the time. <laughs> You're but looking like, at a maximum of four notes on a standard right. set. Exactly, exactly. So like, then you get all this like chromatic timpani and you get these very active bass lines. <laughs> Ding, ding. Yeah, the timpani jumps up regular. one whole step in the B repeat there, so likely okay. too many. <laughs> kind of a but very, it's doable. Very tuning, right? Yeah, it's doable. Thank you, percussive event. <laughs> I'm a violinist, so I don't. I I defer to anyone else on this. <laughs> yeah, same here. Thanks for the help. Although if we get an accordion part in one of these games, man, let me tell you, <laughs> I will I will have thoughts. Because <laughs> mm. I, I have my my accordion that I inherited. His name is Eric. He's the best. He <laughs> is a 120 bass button accordion, which is That's heavy awesome. as can be. I'm going to let this music box theme play because we don't hear it yeah. again for a very long time otherwise. Uh... Man, I wish I had more things to say than I like every piece of music in this soundtrack. But uh, I'm going to be saying that about almost every piece of music uh, in this game. There's a really subtle echo effect that a real music box would have. They really do get it right here. And because the, they're, they're, that's a nostalgia thing, right? They're, like, there's a sentimental nostalgic element to Marl's theme. Absolutely. Yeah, and in fact, the uh, the PlayStation and DS anime opening for the game shows a music box playing this theme. Really? That's really interesting. Oh, I actually have a fair number of these Chrono Trigger things. Let me pull them up. The, um... Like, going through my scores, I'm like, I have more than I realized. <laughs> One of the like real markers of a Chrono Trigger soundtrack for me is the like resolution from four to three at the end of like every single track, and mm -hmm. the whole the jump, the octave jump from like the root to the the four to the five to the octave above, um, and that really happens here because of how how arpeggiated it is as well, but also yeah. the, and the opening, the, the whole the the title not the title theme the menu theme. Uh, the main screen theme is does the same thing. Um, yeah. I have nothing else to say about that, but uh, it's sort of like a marker of this soundtrack for me. Before I move on, I want to. This is a call forward in many ways. Uh, Chrono Cross's music box theme 
is similar to this one, and that has to be intentional on the part of Mitsuda. Smart stuff in Chrono Cross uh, as well. Mm. Oh, yeah. So Kate uh, in the chat seemed confused by why I named it Eric. It's named after its previous owner who I inherited it from. So that's why the accordion's name is Eric. It always seems weird to go and go to that treasure box after. like Also... Your- Moment of true silence, right? Right. There's a yes, lot of that's true. It's worth pointing Ooh. out, I am aware that you could open that treasure box, but it's wiser to wait a very long time. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I'm this always really going to be on, on the hunt for true silences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and if you're a first-time player of the game, then you don't realize uh you know you may know it's about time travel but you won't realize like how much your actions in one era are going to affect actions in another yep as we're listening to this castle theme again i want to point out one of the big differences in my mind between mitsuda's work and umatsu's work generally is that when umatsu does a castle theme and he wants it to be a traditional castle theme He'll write one of those. Mitsuda, at least in my mind, writes what somebody coming to this from popular music would expect a castle theme to be. And that's not a slight against Mitsuda at all. It's just a different approach mm-hmm. to the composition. Does that make sense? Yeah, that is, that's like, interesting. I, pretty soon we're going to hear Frog's theme. And I feel like mm. Frog's theme is exactly what a not music person wants out of a medieval warrior's theme. Mm. Because you could compare Frog's theme to, like, Cyan's theme from Final Fantasy VI in terms of that kind of medieval flair. At least the character. (laughs) Right, Cyan's theme is very, like, samurai, very Asian intervals to open the theme. And Frog's theme here is, like, very Shakespeare in the park. (laughs) And I say that very lovingly because Frog's theme is the best. That's great. Because you could make a theme that sounded like goofy like a frog (laughs) or something. (laughs) But it's much more it's much more sincere considering that, you know, frog is not a I really a frog. Frog's theme was I thought <laughs> Frog's theme was a da 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 It is, yeah, it is. Da 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 Okay. Was I just not it paying is. attention because I was typing? Did that just No, sound? we are about to hear it. <laughs> we have not heard it yet. I see, I see. I see. <laughs> it might be my favorite theme in the game. Because, yeah, the, the making it more froggy element, like, I always thought that the, the timbre of the, the main whatever instrument for that and some of the the gliss, the little gliss slides in it, that to me kind of gave it like a weird amphibious quality. <laughs> huh. But this, never, is like, this is like eight-year-old Dana thinking, you know, oh, of course, well, that, that makes sense for the frog. Right. <laughs> You don't have, like, a huge background of frog music to build off of at eight. Or ever. This is, like, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> and, uh, Dr. Galloway can tell us a lot more about frog music, right, Miss, uh, ah, yeah. musicology. Uh... Yeah.
So, a bit about impossible ensembles again. This church ambient stuff. <laughs> there's no church ensemble that sounds like this. Oh yeah, is this supposed to sound like singing? Like vaguely singing? I think the nuns are supposed to be singing in that voice sample. But combine that... But that's also strings. The, like, it is also strings. Combine it with so the piano sound. The and it sounds like we're hearing both outside and inside at the same time. It's a weird thing. Huh. Yeah, this is this is not church music in any We get the and again this piano is kind of using this weird sparkling mystical Ostinato yeah, thing. This, like this, this shows up in a lot of tracks. Yeah, it does. Yeah. This is a common type of sound for churches in JRPGs. I don't know why that is. Huh. Is it like the light coming in through the stained glass or something? A little bit. A little it's bit. certainly not of, of the tradition of church music, but more of like a kind of semiotic church sound of like holiness or stars or something like that right yeah, it's clearly kind of not playing with as like catholic mystical... as the visual though right like this is clearly supposed right. to be a catholic church so we should have an organ which we do get diegetically here in a minute um yes. and it's a bizarre little messian board <laughs> Voices and sparkle sounds. I like that. <laughs> love the. I love the the chat commentary so much. Oh, that was another really great battle sound effect. The charm sound, because there's like a little kiss to it, and then there's the whoop whoop whoop. <laughs> yep. Love that. So cute. <laughs> it kind of it, it kind of reminds me of Dr. Zoidberg. <laughs> Futurama fans, holla. Yeah, because, gosh, now that now that I'm thinking about it, that, that twinkling ostinato accompaniment is, like, literally all over this game. So, as, as Doug was saying that, you know, he's mm -hmm. he hears the, the it, it insistence on the, the jazz seventh chords all over the place, mm -hmm. I hear this incredibly active, higher register accompaniment, as opposed to putting it all in a very active bass line. Mm. I have a feeling that your percussionist would murder you if you tried to give them that xylophone or marimba part in the top register. That's fast. I'm not saying it's impossible, uh, <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't want to be playing it. Yeah. Should not. Try it seems to sing like it. it seems like something that that folks would play like before rehearsal starts to kind of like show off. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. <laughs> so many different sound effects to signify different kinds of leveling up. The croak sound effect is awesome. <laughs> that, and that, yeah, that's like a little chirp that that when you learn the new text. Yep. And how interesting that we're not referring to it 
in explicitly magical terms, even though we, we will later get magic, but we talk about texts, like mm -hmm. techniques. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah that's true. Hey, I have an interesting thing here I did not notice uh, previously. It's Frog's line on the screen. It's Luca's theme right now. Yeah. Not I Frog's. I was just going to say that. Like, this is interesting. Huh. That is weird. I think this happens more than once, though, where Luca's theme is for, like, becomes a kind of a general fanfare. In yeah. Chrono Cross, right. Luca's theme is the victory theme. There's two different variants of it that will play mm -hmm. there. So it's explicitly made the victory theme every time in the sequel. It's almost like she... I don't know. I'm trying to come up with It's about Luca's reaction to the frog. Theme because the focus is on her right now and how she like, can't deal with a frog in the party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's like a frog racist. She's a speciest. <laughs> speciest. Speciest. But yet she has no problem with robots later on, so whatever. Yeah, she's pretty into robots. It's kind of weird. Those are the three jazziest chords on the organ ever played, by the way. I think it sounds like Messian. Like, um, uh, what piece am I thinking of? It reminds me of uh, the apparition, uh, apparition de l'église éternelle. If you, if anyone remembers that from like music history three in undergrad, <laughs> or or had their professors do that with them, it's one of the creepiest organ pieces. And it haunts my nightmares to this day. <laughs> but it has a bunch of bizarre chords like that. Okay. There's this track. Also, apologies for my French pronunciation. I read it way better than I speak it. <laughs> <laughs> I love this one. My stream keeps freezing. It's just really annoying. Six. A little behind. Reset. After we get out of the battle that I'm hearing here, talk a little bit about what's going on with the... What's it called? Silent Light, I think is the name of the, the track that's in this dungeon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can sit here a minute, because this room doesn't have anything in it. Yeah, excellent. So we still have that very, very folkish flute. Still have a piano ostinato as well, in a sense. Still have a yep. piano ostinato. And it's doing that sort of... Kind of a Baroque... Uh... I was going to say, it's a, it's a Baroque... It's not quite like a... It's almost like a, a violinistic... Uh, string crossing bariolage type technique. I, I, I always refer to this as quasi bariolage because I don't know if there is a keyboard specific term for that technique, but it, it shows up know. everywhere. I don't and know it, either, it but yeah. It shows up <laughs> constantly in video games that are trying to do the Baroque. So Castlevania is full of it. Like, absolutely chock full of that technique. Mm -hmm. um, sort of builds into this pseudo medieval time like medieval time slash church uh cathedral evil cathedral um yeah, yeah. aesthetic where you often get a kind of like these bach and baroque like prelude and fugue things but this is much more subtle and nuanced <laughs> and, and yet again it should be organ right like it's piano is kind of a weird choice here but then we also have the the warmth of that electric bass. Oh, yeah, that electric which isn't, bass isn't yeah. particularly, you know, ringing any baroque bells. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, it's so high in the mix, you know, like yeah. most of the tracks. But it's like it's very prominent. Yeah. Ding. -ling. 
Yeah. And the vocal samples here, just kind of adding atmosphere and ambiance. Yeah, and there's no way that the penny whistle we just heard at the end of that section would compete with electric bass for soundscape in a real ensemble. This is obviously right. digital mm. only. Even right. mm. like aesthetics aside, raw volume, you can't do this. Yeah. It still has those vocal samples. Yeah. Pseudo vocal. Yeah, oh. well, it, I think what, uh, what's actually happening is that we have two SBC tracks, and one of them is actually the vocal sample, and one is a, it's violins that are, so you get both timbres mixed. I see. But, so but it's in unison. Violin. And yeah. actually, okay. I'm going to confirm that real quick, because I, I believe that I have. So no, like, I'll, I'll like get back opera. to you after I pull up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is the my obsession with listening to the original formats all the time, <laughs> so I, I can split everything by channel. That's the main reason I do it is that I when I'm like doing transcriptions or I'm doing any, any kind of work, I, I can wait and be like, hold on a second, what's happening in that one? <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna pause in this room. We haven't talked about this track yet either. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It seems out of place in the cathedral, and it is intentionally. Uh, this is a very happy go lucky town theme. I associate it with uh, Speckio. Is that his name? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's the main place it, it plays, I think end of the game, once you've finished all the side quests for it, I think it also plays in Mystic Village. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. We've got that Renaissance Fair flute. But it's jazzier now. Like, it's it, it doesn't read quite as, like, pseudo-Renaissance Fair as a lot right. of the other ones. I don't really... It's like, I love this track, but I don't really know what to say about it. You've got like a weird pop song barbershop almost series of chords in the upper mid yeah. register accompanying. And almost like, it reminds me a little bit of the cafe theme in Final Fantasy VI, where it's kind of got like a... Like it's a, relatively rare to give the bass a solo as well. It just had one. Yeah. I do agree with uh, Bassoon Dude in the chat that it immediately tells you you're not going to be fighting these three monsters. You can just chat right. with them like NPCs. Yeah, it's it's a safety cue, <laughs> and it, I think it's meant to it's meant to be silly because then you you go and you you talk to all of them and and what they're what they're saying is so ridiculous. Here's our castle theme. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, the Magus theme is very out of place in the cathedral, more so than the awkward like joke theme, I think. Oh, sad. This gives us our first oh, hint so that there's more to is... Magus than meets the eye. <clears throat> this like... is bottom of the night. Um, this is in the transcription I posted above. Um, it's the first one. I feel like the statue of Magus here, by the way, is kind of out of sync with the rest of the game's artwork. That feels very much like an Enix RPG statue to me.
what I love about the end of that loop, it's it's just the way it keeps driving up, 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 and then it just kind of loses. <laughs> it's trying so hard, but ultimately. Yeah, it really lingers on that seven. As they love to do. Lingering on the fourth, lingering on the seventh. He's like. Da, 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 da. These like tense non resolutions. Oof. So they become not so much tense, but like more sort of like longing and. You know. It runs out of steam in that one. No steam. <laughs> ah. It's kind of a sigh. A sigh back into the opening. Yep. Oh, here we go. Okay. Oh no! See, that's why I said trust no one. Okay, so I said I would look into this. <laughs> I muted my mic for a sec while I was taking a listen. Uh, what's happening is we get the vocal samples are basically in thirds, and then they're kind of in that like falling thing. Um, the strings kind of come in with a little sting on that that are quasi unison, and then it just sort of fades away. So it's 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 kind of melting out um, of so it's not in exact unison but it's adding so you get this kind of dreamy cross between a string sound and a vocal sample okay that that's makes just sense so creative like <laughs> that's just so interesting <laughs> but well, it's keep in mind like they... flute and violin yeah. is a very common pairing and so violin and voice sample by extension Makes some yeah. amount of orchestral sense, but I, I think I think it's it's about creating an effect that's additive between the two, and not so much about pairing instruments because they're meant to kind of sound like one thing. Like it's an, it, it's meant to sound like a super voice that's not quite possible because of the string timbre. Because yeah, otherwise, I agree the string with that. writing would be more distinctive. It would be in harmony, or it would be doing something else. Yeah, that's true. It could also be, you know, like the Super Nintendo's voice sample sounds so bizarre yeah. that the violin, the, the strings could be a way to temper from it sounding too voicey or too like op Final Fantasy VI opera or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is quite like that, though. <laughs> the bass does own in this game. <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> Second place would be any of the instruments doing those high ostinato, um, but that kind of varies between like marimba, xylophone, piano, occasionally yeah. plucked strings. I'm uh, back. 
Hello. Hello. What did you have for dinner? I'm still eating hot pot. This is <laughs> lots of lots of delicious meat and rice and veggies and lots of hot things. I'm jealous. Great. Sounds right, like a so winner to me. Oh man. Yeah. It's. Did it's you bring some for good. the class? <laughs> no, I brought some for everybody. You just have to come to New Haven, Connecticut. Mm, you okay. did offer eight minutes before the stream started. If we could all just get there, we could eat food. <laughs> did you play? Oh, did I miss the organ? Oh, you played the organ already. Yeah. Uh, can you play it again? Oh, you there just you did it. <laughs> you did it back in time. That's great. Oh, awesome. Man, I love that organ. It's funny, actually. The, did you guys talk about the organ already? We Same. talked about how those three oh, chords yeah, are way it. jazzier. But yeah, go yeah. for it. Yeah, I was just, that's what I was going to say. Like, for what's supposed to be like a, a you know, uh, stereotypical cathedral setting or whatever, the, the, the harmony of the chords themselves is not at all in line with what you would actually hear in that setting, right. in the standard repertoire that would be played there. Which is why I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were pointing out too in this theme, Doug, that the there's an incongruity where we're doing the the piano part does that kind of classic variolage, like alternating with the static bass note, but it's alternating. I can't sing it fast enough, but yeah, yeah, you know yeah. that that's like all over Castlevania. That's all over games that are trying to do kind of a neo baroque. But then we we have like the the rock bass which owns the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, like, there's all these other instruments that are kind of effing with... Right. With any sense of, like, churchness. Yeah. It's like e we're just having a small little hint to the Baroqueism, but then right. everything else is owned by this kind of bizarre instrumentation. Mm hmm He only ever gets to lightly stroke the church idiom. But it's all w with respect to... <laughs> yes, and Rainbow Tude is ultimately very jazzy harmonic language. Mm -hmm. So as we hear this new, like, alarming "you're in a hurry" theme, the opening melody notes remind me of Zelda being whisked to the dark world in Link to the Past. Uh -huh. Hmm. Like once it gets going, that goes away. But those opening chords remind me of the same passage that plays when Agnihim blasts Zelda to the dark world. Huh. <laughs> I'm liking some of these comments that are. This is also super here. percussion heavy. Again, <laughs> a lot of the tracks have been yeah. so far. This percussion is so good. And the bass. Oh god. It's just so good. It's, it's hard for me to say something else besides this is just so good. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've not like thought about this music analytically at all. <laughs> yeah, I really like orchestral trebled clef and electric bass clef. We need to hear more of that. Yeah. Mm. I made sure to set up my laptop out in the kitchen and turn this on for everybody who is eating <laughs> dinner right now. So they're all, they're all listening yes. to this stream. <laughs> Effing with the churchness is a sentence ready for an AMS paper. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> oh, bye, Julian. <laughs> oh. oh, no, how is he hiding in that human costume the whole time? I know, that's really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Now we get our first boss theme, right? I think so, yeah. This is the first one, right? Yeah, this is the first boss. Brass lead, which is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. But then the rock brass organ. samples. Yeah, but that, yeah, the, the rock organ. Yeah. Which is, That's... again, why weren't we using organs to convey church? Why are we using piano in the church areas? Right. <laughs> fun. <laughs> so yeah. I think we're intentionally like. I think there's an attempt to use tropes that are familiar from other music, but mess with the instrumentation enough that we feel that this isn't Earth at all. <laughs> this yeah. is definitely another planet. 
Right. Or at least like it's it's harmonically tropey, but not necessarily instrumentationally. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. But rock organ is interesting because that's like always been a very Nobuo Ematsu thing to me. Is that Nobuo Ematsu like loves his rock organ? I mean, we heard it a lot in Final Fantasy VI when we were doing that. You know, yeah. A lot of, like the battle themes. I mean, it makes me wonder if he was like standing over Mitsuda's shoulder, like there should be rock organ in this. <laughs> it just seems like it's it's kind of a like a. Okay. Hello. Welcome back. It's a, Welcome back. It's a, it's a trope <laughs> that solidified not just in Uematsu's games. Like, I don't, I don't think he alone was responsible for that, even though he obviously had a proclivity for yeah. kind of prog rock. Um, yeah. I think it comes mostly out of just intense energy and sort of wanting to make the player excited um, yeah. as they're fighting something intense. Yeah. Oh, like, I like it's, it's natural correlate. Yeah, I like Bassoon Dude's observation of it's an evil church. <laughs> As opposed to a real church, so you get suspicious. Does, yeah, that's like that's nice. I like suspicious. that. <laughs> okay, I'm refilling my hot pot. Yeah. Ah. Now I just want like all of the food. Yeah, I, but I, I would argue it's not just it's not that just the church stuff that's off. Like there are there are sort of interesting instrumentation choices throughout like the, the music is just beautifully written and very consistent but uh you know where i might expect a certain instrument to play whatever theme or ostinato or accompaniment it usually shows up in an instrument i'm not expecting i think that helps create a style that if you can manage to unify it throughout the whole soundtrack which this game does successfully uh it rings as unique you can hear something and think oh this is in chrono triggers orchestral style not just mm. some traditional set of rules that's being followed. Mm. Also, this is again Luca's theme as fanfare. Yep. Do we identify the fanfare as Luca's theme originally? I for where no. the first time we heard it was was it when Frog? When Frog showed up. Yeah, showed it's when up. Frog showed up. Yeah, that's weird. So, so we we think of it more as a fanfare or or some sort of like event music. So I wonder when it becomes linked to Luca. That's a good question. Cuz it it really Yeah, does. we'll have to watch for that. So many other places. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of our our uh, going back and forth about Tara's theme, Tina's theme, yeah, <laughs> and and saying you know that we really think what, what was it Awakening that we decided was right. more more her theme in a lot of ways than the actual overworld map theme. Here we get Frog's theme for the first time. He steps forward before it plays, so it's clearly marked as his. There you go. That's my amphibious. I love the wicked, <laughs> wicked pitch bend on the melody line in the flute. Yeah. yeah. Them pitch bends, though. You know, it sounds very Celtic, now that I'm thinking about it. It's kind of that Celtic vocal bend. Mm-hmm. And then also the kind of the... Oh my the, god, uh, it's The Steve. meter. <laughs> You're literally wrong. Oh god. It's actually far easier to do that type of bending with the voice than it is to do it on flute smoothly. That's not an easy bend to do. Yeah, this and is see, like I don't bizarre. think I ever even really read this as quote unquote flute. Because I mean, it's definitely not an orchestral sound. Which is, I think, why as a small child I, I read it as and. Begin. Like, yeah, I was able to just go, oh, that's that's like frog sound. <laughs> oh, yeah, at least Love it. Animal. I don't, I, you know, you know <laughs> I don't really get anything animalistic from frog steam, but I definitely do get like vagabond. Like, actually, I compare frog steam to shadow steam mm -hmm. from Final Fantasy VI. I feel like interesting, those two but with less of the spaghetti that's... western element. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But the same sort of like, I'm a lone hero. I'm up against the world, all by myself. 
Nobody can help. But, yeah. but it should be like, you're anime. even using a low a low voice to do that. So the fact that we have this really high instrument that's doing that kind of adds like a weird. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Twist on again. We're, we're, we're twisting things. We're taking and we're twisting them in some way. I'm still holding the on only to other it. game it's a Celtic that track. really. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other games that explore. I think the percussion music. really there works is... for 90s pop Celtic stuff. We mentioned 90s era yeah. things earlier. Yes, this is... <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're seeing Drum Ultima post in the comments right now. That is the table yeah. in my kitchen of people watching right yes. now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> hey Dana, here's some more marked silence for you before uh, Marl's track yeah, plays. Yeah, is. This is the second time we've had silence in the same room, yo. Mm -hmm. What up? This room is bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Marl's theme. And then we get her music box theme. Mm -hmm. A little sad in this instance, although yeah. usually it just reads as sweet and nostalgic. Yeah. And sentimental. But it's a little sad here. Because she's getting all like, oh, you wouldn't have liked me if you knew I was a princess. <laughs> right. Yeah, because that makes you way less attractive. Yeah, I work yeah. in Aladdin. I mean, right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, percussive event. We can do that. I've heard Doug play live a number of times. I was well aware he's capable of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm actually, it's kind of funny, like, seeing seeing a percussive event get into the scene now, because, like, I thought that I was, like, the only video game percussionist, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and I have a, a, a formidable colleague who has entered the scene now. If you ever see her play, she's, like, serious. She's really, really good. Huh. Um, which I'm so using what you're as saying an Teamwork and collaboration, your... not competition. <laughs> so you're going to remake the scene from the Deliverance, but you're going to use the xylophone parts from this game Yeah. <laughs> as, as you're uh, back and forth. <laughs> yeah, totally. This is a video I would watch. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, my pit's got him. Oh, oh Secret of the Forest. I was gone for Secret of the Forest, wasn't I, before? Yeah. Oh, man. Too bad, we gotta fight the rolling riders. I'm gonna be a broken record about these arpeggiated Astonati. Yeah. Also, I, I feel like, did you talk about the bass line to this? Just that it's great. It's just that it's, just it's, that it's very active. And it's very, the bass keeps being very far ahead, it forward in the texture and the mix. Yeah. And it's like, kind of like a, it has a pedal point thing going on, right? Like it's the same repeated motif over and over and over again. And I really feel like that is like very much an homage or at least intentionally referential to the Final Fantasy battle bass lines, you know? Mm, yeah. Like it's, it's the same brief pattern, two note pattern happening over and over and over again. Yeah, hey you Doug, know? what do you have to say on the forest theme? Cause this is the last time I get to stand and listen to it for some time. Um, I have a great YouTube video of this theme. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the forest theme is, uh, actually, I think I brought this up in a, a previous stream with, like, the fixation on, like, flat, what was it? Um, uh, the, the half step, half step chord progression down. So the, I think it's, if I remember correctly, it's G flat major seven to F minor seven, which is like a trope that we get a lot in in like video game music especially jrpgs and we, we were we had one in final fantasy 6 i think Dana, you're like what's another one and i was like oh god what's another one what's it secret of the forest secret of the forest is another one and so here we are, <laughs> here we are. i like it yeah. by the way doug plays a lot of mitsuda's music on his youtube channel which if you have not heard his arrangements, you should definitely be going and checking them out. Probably oh. instead of watching this right now, honestly. No, 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 no. Everybody should be watching this right now. Supplemental materials. <laughs> yeah. Go, you can study after. <laughs> it's homework. I like that these dudes like play, I like the whole like, they're just playing like kickball or whatever with the The roly polies, yeah. Yeah. I, that's something that I've always liked about this game is that the, the, the random battles are not that random actually. You can see the enemies and 
Mm -hmm. It gives them a lot more personality to. too, to see that like they have things to do besides yeah. like fight you. Yeah, yeah like yeah. even just the the green imp like sticking his tongue out at you. Like, yeah. I love how many little animations the <laughs> the enemy sprites get. It gives them a lot of character. Definitely. Yeah, they definitely inhabit the spaces. Whereas the other games, you kind of are transformed, even even your perspective changes, so it feels very much like separate from your overarching quest, whereas, yeah. you know, fighting within the space, even though the music changes drastically. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it, for me, it's yeah. like I always get so frustrated when I have a random encounter in another game. Like, I'm going to explore this place. Oh, the screen just exploded. Now I have to do this thing for whatever reason. <laughs> like, yeah. literally, like, shatters. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, there yeah. is usually, like, a big light flash or some kind of... <laughs> yeah. well, and you guys, Zoom uh, in. you all know this is the collaboration game between Square and Enix before the two companies merged, right? No, I uh, do not know that. <laughs> it's also worth mentioning that... Uh, the game that not fighting on a separate plane comes from isn't Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest. It's Secret of Mana. And I feel like you can I read a lot of Secret of Mana influences of Mana. in this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and like the way you move through the space in particular. Yeah, agreed completely. Chrono's animations in particular seem directly inspired by the main character of Secret of Mana. Yeah. Okay, here's here's Lucas <laughs> theme as we fanfare, we but we associate it more with the gate key here. Um, animations for the enemies, which are in contrast, like we just played six. We can't really add a lot of animation to that because it was so complex to render Yoshitaka Mano's drawings yeah. into pixel art to begin with. You can't really do anything else with them, so they had to be static. Whereas these ones are in the style of the actual character sprites, and so they, they're able to add a little bit more play there. So Luca is finally doing something during this <laughs> fanfare. So this is sort of like a good connection between Luca's theme and Luca. Um, and okay. also sort of like the point of the game <laughs> happening right here uh, is these gates. Gate key is kind of weird looking. I never read that as a key. It kind of reminds me of the statues in Six when you the go. The yeah, the ones that are not the actual statues on the floating yeah. continent, like after the Yeah. Look. Love that little time travel sound effect. Super cool. We're going to go fight Gato very quickly for silver Sando. points. Yeah, yes. I love that theme. As I walk there, I want to point out that you mentioned a mono in Final Fantasy VI. Uh, mm -hmm. Akira Toriyama did the keyframe art for this game, and he's most mm -hmm. well known for Dragon Ball Z. And you can clearly yes. see Dragon Ball style anime as a huge yep. influence all oh, over yeah. every moment uh, of the art in this game. Especially if you look in the menu, the actual the character art. Oh yeah, here's Gato and his pop music, pop American Idol moment. <laughs> oh. Anybody ever try to sing yes. the song <laughs> to the theme and like go, what fits. the hell? <laughs> No, it totally fits. Oh, on Overclocked yeah. Remix, there's an epic rap arrangement of Gato's theme. Well, I think I've actually I think heard that. very well for it. It's got that boasting quality to it. It's great clapping, great timpani, great like he he like lifts or she maybe lifts the pinky while holding the microphone. Just so Technically, good. by the way, there is silence after you beat Gato here, but I'm not counting that as a forced moment of silence. It's just like, well, the event's done. Put in your quarter again. Right. I will have to fight him three times, by the way, to get enough points. Mm -hmm. Have you bet yet on the uh, the racing? I'm not going to do it. Uh, Low chance of success. 
But you, if you just ask you the can old mess man, with them, though, <laughs> you can like can totally you can't, mess though. with them while they're running. Don't you tell can't. me that. I believed it. Yeah, they pass right through you. You can't interact <laughs> with them in any right meaningful way. You. you can totally psych them out. <laughs> I like this memory though. Cadillac is the best though. It doesn't even need to be put up for consideration. Oh yeah, Cadillac was always my bet, even before I knew that you could like sort of predict. Who would win? <laughs> All right. Every time I pass through the Millennial Fair, I will attempt this mini game one time until I get it right. Uh, <laughs> but I don't want to take up too much stream time otherwise. But we have to go do another one of those Norstein Beckler's lab games now. Mm-hmm. Norstein Beckler's lab. Is he supposed to be Ripley's Believe It or Not, do you think? Like, what? what is his... I always thought that there was an emulation problem because he doesn't have a body. He's just hands and a head. I always thought that, like, there was something oh, you wrong. Have... That's interesting that you thought it was... I assumed that, like, I was emulating the game incorrectly by some means. Because when I started to play this game, SNES 9X didn't do transparencies yet. And so oh. I just assumed there was a layering problem. That's not actually the case. He's just hands and a head. Oh. He's weird. <laughs> Some of us played it on original console cartridge. Uh, whatever. Uh, some of us yeah. were poor, Dana. Some of us still own it because I would be an idiot to sell it. Oh, Dude, yeah. yeah. I still own it. I wish I owned it. So admittedly, and I, you know, I think a couple people mentioned in the chat that like they haven't, they didn't play this when they were a kid or they missed out when they were a kid. Honestly, I missed out on this when I was a kid. I didn't have this. I wish I did. But I had no idea that this game even existed when I was a kid. It wasn't until I got older and like the internet unanimously decided that this was one of the best games ever made that I got to play. <laughs> you know? I thank my brother, Matt, and our Nintendo Power subscription for cluing us in that this was a game that we would want to check out. Yeah. I mean, I wish I did. I was a Sega kid growing up. I had a Sega Genesis. Oh. That was, so that was what my parents decided I should have, and they still regret it to this day. Not because it was a bad system, but because it <laughs> didn't have a good effect on my behavior as a child and whatnot, you know? So you just, like, played comfort. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, like, all the time? Um, I lied. I'm going to try it one more time. I'm really mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, Michael Jackson. That was ridiculous. I still the can't the emulation, though, of his music is brilliant. Hmm. Like, and he didn't the like encoding. it. Really? I thought it I thought it matched so well, beautifully. Well, maybe he liked it in uh, maybe he was okay with it in Moonwalker. I don't know. But he the reason he's not credited in Sonic 3 is because he didn't like the way Sega made his music sound. Like like yeah. sample wise. But That's he wrote all thing. that music in Sonic 3. My favorite are the vocal samples in that game too. Like when you go to a new level and it's like ah! yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Uh, so, while we're on our Michael Jackson digression, uh, Owen, my four-year-old, plays Sonic the Hedgehog 3, like, every morning on my Vita while I'm still waking oh, up. Good for him. And You're a good parent. I've got uh, the ability, because I have a the Sonic 3 Complete, the hacked ROM, I can choose which editions of the music where there are multiple arrangements to play, <laughs> like the PC right. MIDIs or the awesome. Genesis Originals. Yeah, yeah. And Jackson had nothing to do with the PC MIDIs, which are largely, like, worse in every way. And it's so interesting. If you hear Knuckles theme, it's this amazing, obviously Michael Jackson rip that. And then on the PC, it's like. It's like just hot garbage. Oh, gosh. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I read a whole article about Michael Jackson's involvement with that and the whole, like, just. just the company distancing themselves from, yep. yeah. you know, after all the scandals. And there was like, a lot of investigation done yeah. by the uh, yeah. the fan community surrounding video game music to kind of bring yeah. that to light, too. Um, it's a really good success to, of the community. To Michael Austin's book. Uh, there's, there's a Michael Jackson's Moonwalker chapter by Melanie Frisch, I oh, believe. Cool. Oh, cool. I think it was Melanie. I know because I proposed a chapter on Michael Jackson's Moonwalker and I was told it had already been claimed. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And so I was Amazing. like, well, crap. What else do I have? 
<laughs> so yeah. uh, great chapter. I recommend it. I ended up writing about Mario Paint composer oh, nice. and YouTube. Nice. You know, have there been any uh, games recently that have really now. capitalized off of a pop star writing music for the game? Has that happened since Sonic Three? Leona Lewis I mean, wrote the Final, Final Fantasy XIII theme for uh, uh, the States. Yeah, Leona Lewis. There's and actually, you oh. just reminded me of uh, Destiny. Didn't Destiny get Paul McCartney? That's, yes, that that's correct. Too. Yeah. Huh. And, and like it, Japanese. The stars. ladies that sang the Final Fantasy PlayStation trilogy theme songs are uh, pop stars in Japan. They're well known musicians outside of game music. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, whatever. I don't have enough points for moving on. I'll do it later. I'm so mad. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you gotta beat him up to win 15 silver points. Ah. Uh. Okay. <laughs> I love the guy. Also, I did the Soto Guzzling thing though, twice in a row on my hand cramp. A lot of examples, but very few games that completely center on a figure the way Moonwalker centers on Jackson. Like, yeah. Where oh, it occurs to me, star, guys, we've like, not okay, talked about this piece of music yet. On the 1000 right. yeah, AD true. music out here. Like, where is Lady Gaga's, like, You're right. Mama Monster? Where is like, Lady Gaga's game? <laughs> It's, that that is a, a travesty. Uh, Revolution yeah, X, know. the Aerosmith-based first-person <laughs> shooter where you throw CDs Ophelia, at people, kind of put the kibosh on all other something. music artist yeah. games. You guys know that's a thing, right? Uh, I love this iteration of the theme. By the way, we were talking about like how we hear the uh, the, the main theme of this game, the one 1080. Yes. It's so beautiful. I don't know if you guys talked about that. I was always creeped out by this version because it was just so kind of like disparate and oh. I have a transcription of this one. Hold on. Sweet. Yes. This version seems so serene, too. <laughs> okay, load that up while I put more food in my bowl. <laughs> yeah. You're making me so hungry, Dad. I know, right? I'm, I've had really nice tapas for supper, actually. Uh, courtesy Addy, who went to the store and bought a ton of stuff. Nice. Ugh. Like, I had great dinner, don't get me wrong. Joe made me, like, jelly stuffed pancakes, and they were delicious. <laughs> Avian Chaos. I do not remember that being the name for this that's like a bird. great metal band <laughs> it really is actually speaking of birds and metal bands do you guys know about hate beak no it is no we don't know about band. hate beak the death metal band whose lead singer is a parrot <laughs> like a real parrot yeah they 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 just sample it and then they they use it like over death metal things that sounds excellent <laughs> wow. I feel like if there is one sequence of the game here that stands out as the single coolest thing, the trial sequence we're about to come up ac ac oh. across oh, is up no. there. The music for this is just so good. I wonder if this Chancellor is a good person. This music is very comic. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> yeah, now we've brought up Miss Anne twice. Woo! <laughs> this sample, by the way, I know it's a little less flute than a real flute, but it feels closer than Frog's theme. Maybe that's just style? I think it's the style. I mean, I think it's the same... I think it's the same. Is it the same sample sound? but no pitch sound. bend? So it's yeah. Okay. Oh, harps on this one now with the that long that string guitar? sequence like, feels is, kind of Evaldi to me. I guess I always read it as harpsichord, but with an impossible like tremolo effect. Oh, I, I hear a mandolin, guitar. guys. Yeah, a stringed, a yeah, handheld string instrument. 
could be wrong. I, I hear it is. Oh, I, I don't know. I'm having a pluckiness that I. It's hard to go back and like re re hear things <laughs> that are synthesized. Oh. So, as Dana hinted at earlier, I'm about to be judged for all of the stuff I've done in the Millennial Fair. So many of these kind of trigger songs tracks have this like B section that's like really sort of raises the tension with the the strings. Yeah. And then kind of like it sort of dissipates. I feel like that sort of like staccato section that just finished. Mm-hmm. We're made explicitly aware it's and a string it sample and not the strings, because those samples don't do that staccato thing well. Mm. Yeah, don't have much to say on this one other than, like, it's it's all of the Baroque. <laughs> <laughs> Just... oh, it keeps freezing, but it's... When you say that, though, Dana, I hear a lot of Commedia dell'arte-style stuff in this and not just like high baroque music yeah i i think that this moment of this theme really reminds me of kafka's theme actually it's got mm-hmm. yeah you're right absolutely in some ways i, I mean the sure string kafka, sequence that's about to start in two uh, seconds for you guys sounds a lot like kafka i mean i'm just 95 football. i think so they're within a year of each other I mean, I just, I just get the feeling like there are so many tropes that happen in FF6 that this worked off of, you know? Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Like, I, I would be surprised if Chrono Trigger came before Final Fantasy VI based on listening to the music. Okay, I'm gonna Google. I'm, I'm pretty sure six was 94, and okay. uh, Chrono Trigger was 95. I definitely. Uh, I do know for a fact Chrono Trigger came out one year after six. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, they came out like almost a year apart. Almost exactly yeah. a year apart. Wow. The issue here is motive. Very musical. Um, <laughs> I guess what I was going for with that comment about like the B sections being more sort of uh, stringy, uh, sort of bringing back a kind of pathos is that like the the A sections are more, I guess, kind of semiotically related to the scene at hand. And then the B sections sort of bring in this kind of more deep underlying, more like uh, kind of like a, an emotional theme of, of the whole game, kind of sort of like a deeper, maybe Lavosian <laughs> kind of, uh, I don't know where I'm going with this, but it always seemed to me like it, like two parts of every track kind of signaling different things. Like one's a more immediate feeling and the other one is a more of a kind of expansive feeling of this whole game. Yeah. 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 All right, so Doug, I've been, I've been just like listening uh, and thinking about the Kafka connection. So I think a lot of what's creating that is the strong kind of two, four emphasis. Even yeah. though we're in four, but it's got a bump, bump, bump. Boom, 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 right. boom, like that plotting element, yeah, totally. plus, of course, the, the pluckiness, the use of the pizzicato, the use of the, you know, whatever guitar, harpsichord, whatever we're going to call that. Um, right, right, right. It's got, it's got a mischievousness, yeah. and I think there's also a lot of leaps that are happening yeah. in all of the different parts. Right. And that's, that's something that we see. Yeah, you know what, and I can, I can add to that in, like, the, the emphasis on accented non-chord tones, right? Yeah. Da, 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 you know, all those moments. Where yeah. it's, like, it's a little off kilter. You know, every time you get a non a non-accented chord tone, it's yeah, that that's where I guess I would say mischief is heard harmonically. Yeah. You know? That's I will say in this getting taken away theme, I love how we still have the same theme from the trial. Yeah. Da, 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 yeah. I hear acoustic bass now instead of electric bass too. Unless it's I think you're I hear timpani. I just hear timpani <laughs> actually, yeah. Yeah, maybe it's just timpani. They're like way tuned uh volume wise. 
Or even Also, a fun, a fun thing to... When listening to video game timpani parts, ask yourself if it was one person behind four drums with nothing more than the power of their feet <laughs> to change. Right. We were talking about is that. Is it possible like, to play? Like that, that's like one of my favorite the video game tropes is, is impossible timpani. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yep. like just so chromatic and they make them into these fully fledged bass lines that, that like you have to have it like 18 drums around you. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. I have a great story uh, from Laura and Travia of Video Games Live who performs with them as a soloist, but has also done a number of arrangements for them. And she did an arrangement of like the Smash Brothers theme from one of the Smash Brothers games, either Melee or Brawl, I don't remember what. And she transcribed it pretty much exactly as it was, and apparently the timpanist came up to her and was like, um, just so you know, this doesn't work. And she had like, legit like a 16th note scale <laughs> that she had transcribed from the original. And, and she, that, yeah, we were talking about it because I was talking to her about like, playability of timpani parts in the in the yeah. show when i played it she was like oh man you haven't seen the you haven't seen smash brothers have you and i was like ah no we don't have that in the folder <laughs> she showed it to me it's like leg legitimately a semi-chromatic scale for a full measure of just 16th notes <laughs> it's like nobody that's even... awesome <laughs> that's great that's so i great. want to see you doug like running across an entire stage of like 12 or 16 timpani now <laughs> you should yeah. see, see me do it, but why don't you just go see a performance of the Phil Glass Timpani Concerto? Then you'll get a little bit of that. Mm. That needs like twenty drums or something crazy. There's a lot. There's a lot of timpani on stage for that one. So this wind sound effect is borrowed directly from Final Fantasy VI, uh, ah. on top of uh, Narsh near the Esper. Yeah. And it's used again. I'm facing Yay. Chrono to the left we, for a we moment. We brought that up literally every single time it played in six. So I'm really glad. now we can now we can do the reverse and say, hey, remember yeah. how this was? That's right. Six? <laughs> yes. I've frozen yeah. Chrono here on the ledge. Aww. This specific shot maybe that's why is exactly had, like, recreated right, inside of Viper Manor in Chrono game. Cross. Maybe there are like these all these uh, nostalgic kernels that were hypnotizing me towards loving this game. Oh man. Oh. That's really cool. I just heard you say that. <laughs> hmm. Oh, nice. Man, yeah, Chrono Cross is a great game. I I feel bad that so many people didn't like that game. Um, which I guess I understand. But the music and the the art direction in that game were really fantastic. Um but there were some weak points, like the billions of playable characters that had nothing to do with the plot. I wasn't a big fan of that. Is it 46 <laughs> playable characters in Chrono Cross? Yeah, I, like, how am I supposed to get attached to any of those, you know? like. <laughs> well, it's amazing that in 6 you're able to get attached to so many, because that's, that's, that's such a massive cast. Well, that, that's just good writing. You know? Yeah, it is good writing. There, Everybody no, gets a compelling story. Yeah, there, none yeah. of those uh, characters. Except are really for Go Go. Oh, oh yeah, Go Go. <laughs> I think else. that Surge, yeah. Kid, Fargo, Glenn, and yeah. uh, one more that I want to argue for. Playable characters. Of playable characters, get good developed um, plot lines. Um, uh. Scala and Kid for sure, or uh, Kid and Surge. For sure. Yeah. Glenn, yeah. for sure. And then everyone else is like second tier. Yeah. It's too bad. I mean, they. I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah, Final Fantasy VI, I mean, with the exception of like the secret characters that you had to like unlock, you know, you got really attached to all the characters. And like, there's somewhere it was just like, okay, yeah, you're gonna sit in my like roster and I'm never gonna call upon you ever again because I, I, I just feel when I'm playing the game that you are. <laughs> completely auxiliary to the, the mm. plot of this game. You have nothing to do with the plot of this game. But, oh well. Oh, this, like, totally amazing <laughs> ghost Halloween sound effect. Yeah. That you get, like, in... Yeah. 
like <laughs> everywhere. Like it's like it not. Nice it's very like, theremin yeah. sounding. Yeah. yeah. Just, just for that that brief moment for you to wreck a skeleton. I mean, <laughs> and we got that dramatic cuts or dramatic uh, character sprite from uh, from Chrono there as that happened. <laughs> and now you're gone. Wreck a skeleton. That'll be my first album by <laughs> Avian Chaos. <laughs> the new Good. metal band that I've decided to form. I was actually in a death metal band briefly in high school. Sweet. <laughs> awesome. I was playing electric violin running through a preamp so that I could sound like death metal guitar, but I was playing violin. Awesome. That's dope. That's really great. <laughs> Yeah, we couldn't get our band shit band together band. though and find a singer, and that was that was ultimately what ended us. Aww. The guy we got oh, kind gosh. of sounded like he belonged in like a Christian rock band, like he was kind of creedy, and uh, I was like, nope, I'm out. Nope. <laughs> like f this noise. I wish I could have been in a band when I was in high school. There. I played uh, Night in the Woods recently, and that game definitely, like, gave me this sense of uh, nostalgic longing for the, the high school garage band I never had. That's a, major plot, that's a major, like, uh, not plot point, but uh, gameplay element in that game is that there are these, like, brief moments of, like, Guitar Hero, basically, where you have to go to band rehearsal. Right. And uh, the tunes are just, like, angsty teenage stuff that you would have played when you were in high school. <laughs> Okay, I spaced out. Where are we in the game right now? <laughs> uh, I'm still we're breaking, breaking out of jail. Prison. We're breaking out oh, of jail. Okay. That's right, we're still trying to get out of jail. <laughs> I'm just going on like a Japanese digression in the comments, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Something about talking about the impossibility in the orchestra uh, just got me thinking about like... Um, Karaoke or you know kata okay empty orchestra which a lot of oh. people know now from how I met your mother. Uh, oh wow! Some girl tells Ted that in the bar and he's like, "That's hauntingly beautiful." Uh, you know, th there's a, like a sense of the impossible orchestra. I mean, in that case, it's because the orchestra isn't in the room with you because the track is just playing. But then I started thinking about karate, which is empty hand because the te is your hand. Um, but kara also means sky, so I always pictured it as like your 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 hands like whizzing through the air. <laughs> yeah. <I like> that. <laughs> <laughs> Too much sake. Actually I had chocolate milk, so I'm I'm not even drinking anything fun tonight. Amazing. <laughs> I have very chocolate cheap wine. Milk is awesome, Too much like chocolate Walgreens milk. wine. <laughs> Walgreens wine. Nice. You know you know where you get good like cheap wine is Aldi's, man. Do you guys have Aldi's mm -hmm. where you are? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's how uh, I afford groceries, real talk. Yeah, Seriously. they're um, they're actually like surprisingly good for everything. Yeah. I mean, I've always been impressed. <laughs> so I forgot about this whole sequence where you have kind of, you stealth kill some of these guards and you're also climbing around. Yeah. And it realized sort of, <laughs> Oh, almost platformy. Yeah. It's not really, but It's like, like Metal Gear Solid-esque, though. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm, I was not good at Metal Gear Solid. I played through the first two, I think, and then I got to three, and I just... There was a point in the game where I just was not good enough at, at being stealth to play that game anymore. Because mm. as so, a gamer, I'm, I'm very explosive. I'm more like the... I'm just going to jump into something and hope that yeah. whatever I can do battle-wise is good enough. So, like... Same. <laughs> there was a point where that game was like challenging like how stealth can you be i'm like i can't do that I'm, stealth. I'm like give me the one of my claims to fame gun. in terms of what i've done yeah. in gaming is i have finished all of metal gear solid 2 without killing anybody Whoa. wow i don't think i can do that what kind of undertale play is that <laughs> yeah. okay i did i did get through undertale without or doing the passage run 
but yeah i mean it's still like that's still like chaotic and crazy because it's like a bullet hell and you're like oh my god i have to get i have to avoid everything you know yeah <clears throat> still exciting. i haven't done a re- i haven't done a, my pacifist replay yet oh the pacifist ending like i i'm not gonna lie as an as a almost 30 year old adult professional man i cry every time <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Well, I'm gonna have to do it then. I'll, I'll watch my friends play it on like streams. I'll just start crying. <laughs> it's so oh. emotional. It's so intense. It's so good. I highly recommend. It. And if you don't cry, then that's just like how much of a soft. It's fine. It means I'm a bad person. That's that's what I got out of this. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> that's the sending. <laughs> Is is totally tear inducing. I I can. I'm just starting I, my Undertale play right now, so I, I can't speak to it. I, I, yeah, well, I won't. I won't spoil. Just yeah, just, no just say. I, I am doing a pacifist playthrough like, though, just because I like the challenge of figuring out how to not kill things. Uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Not kill anything. It's it really all? hard. I mean, Ryan, you actually might have to play it again, whether you do the pacifist or not. Because I think the first time you play the game, you can't actually get a pass from this track. No Did we talk do. about this track? Oh, well, now it's the boss theme. The kind of, like, running... The Shadow oh. of Crisis theme? The Crisis, yeah, we didn't the crisis really... theme? We no. didn't talk so much about it yet. There's other kind of run, crisis, emergency themes from other JRPGs. Yeah. But... I guess, unfortunately, Undertale was more important than it. Congratulations, Toby Fox. You're more important than the crisis theme, Chrono Trigger. Wow. Yeah. Pacifist Run didn't actually make me cry, I should clarify. I'm like, I'm like made of stone and like nothing makes me cry, but except for that Dragon Cancer I've mentioned many times. Oh, I gotta play that game. Oh my god. Oh my god. Really it's more, I, and I describe it, it's really more of a visual novel. Like, I yeah. think the point of the game is to make you feel helpless completely. Yeah. Because like, there's a lot of things where you're like, I'm doing the thing, why is nothing working? Like, it's right, supposed right, to right. be. Um, beautiful game, though. Total yeah. tearjerker. I, I do want to play that. I kind of want I kind of want to do, like, a stream. Like, I want to do, like, a fundraiser stream where I just, like, play games that make me cry. Like, yeah. play that game, you know? Um, maybe, like, everybody's gone to the rapture. Maybe a depression <laughs> Any any games like any games like that that are just like super emotional, you know. I mean, to the moon gets a lot of folks. Oh, I think. Oh, that got me and Addy. Holy cow! Yeah, yeah. to yeah. the moon is amazing. Oh yeah. <laughs> I cried a lot at that game. Oh gosh. Hmm. And normally, yeah, normally I'm not like a. Normally I don't like cry from games, but there are a few themes that will get me every time. A few specific themes that will absolutely. Get me. I thought it was beautiful and very sweet. It just like I didn't cry. I cry. <laughs> uh, but then like, what a like a monster I am. I didn't cry in the first scene of Op either. So <laughs> I don't know. If so I cried everyone's really like, that. I cried during some like, pretty I, dumb stuff. I did like, cry. Yeah. I did cry in that movie, but it was later. It's when he opens the adventure book. Oh. Uh. Yeah. That's when I finally was like, oh, she filled it out! Yeah. Like, oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, the that. opening, I was like, oh, that's such a good story! But I knew that he had to be like a widower at the beginning, so I don't know, I was like kind of prepared for it, I guess. Yeah. I have a soft spot for dogs in particular. If I'm gonna cry at something, it might it will probably involve a dog. And I saw this animation that somebody made of the like the Mario or the Dr. Mario theme. Where the lyrics and the animation were about this dog that he had that he got when he was a kid, and the dog like was his best friend growing up because he didn't have any friends. And then at the end of the game, the Aww. dog gets old, the dog has to die, and the kid's like, "Don't worry, now I'll take care of you." And I, it's like Dr. Mario music. I'm listening to Dr. Mario yeah. music, and I'm falling my eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad. Like yeah, I also... need to. I need to look at that. I'm revising my Dr. Mario chapter as we speak. So. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the music has nothing to do with the subject matter. Like, literally nothing. No, but I don't know that's why. It, I, that's but... it's interesting to me then. Nothing to do with it, but oh my god, I was falling my eyes out. It was so bad. <laughs> the other one is uh, the end of Lost. 
you ever saw the TV show Lost, if you watch it all the way through, the very last episode has a scene with the dog in it, and like, I, it wasn't anything else going on, it was just the dog. <laughs> I just like, lost it. And like, I was also like- So how are you on the- <laughs> How are you on the Futurama episode with the dog? Oh, dude, that, that hits me too. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man. I I've, just... I've only ever watched it once. Like, I refuse to go back. Yeah. I can't. I, I, I just know, can't. Like, I just have this, like, image in my mind that dogs are just so much better than people. Like, they just, like, they're way more honest and way more real and... People are just like full of like dumb stuff that complicates their feelings. Whereas like, I think if a dog does something, then that's the reason to get upset, <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to a person doing something great. Uh, <laughs> that's 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 my that's my my drunken dogs make me cry rant. You know whatever. It's fine. <laughs> hey, here's your forced silence again with Marl, Dana. Ah, uh, yeah. It keeps it keeps coming up because of her. Yeah. Oh, it's all her fault. That's right. I remember this part. Hmm. Uh, okay, refill time. I'll be your be. I know the Chancellor's evil, but I gotta respect his beard game. Like, that's impressive. That takes some upkeep. <laughs> also, that was an impressive change. How did she do that? How did she get out of a ball gown, and where did the ball gown go? That's just, like, the undercoat to her dress. She just chucked off the fluffy part that's the petticoat underneath. That was impressive knowledge of petticoat -ness. Yeah, like like that's her like her uh, her bloomers. <laughs> so she's not wearing like a cool like flowing like anthropology style pantsuit. She's she's literally just wearing bloomers in public. <laughs> Forest stripping. <laughs> anthropology style <laughs> pantsuit. I worked at Anthropology, and like her outfit is totally something we would sell for like our summer oh. catalog. <laughs> oh, like the, the the clothing, not the oh yeah of study. Uh, right, Anthropology. <laughs> like like fieldwork outfit or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should specify. Over I love the animation of the so Chancellor the, right there. Beautiful. Wait, yeah. his, um... His, like, crazy eyes. Open mouth, yes. Yes, I love it. I want that as, like, a fridge magnet. I, that would be really easy to do. Yeah. His mouth is... large. I played the fanfare there so we can talk about it if we have anything to say. I don't know if I have anything to say about... The creepy one? Yeah, the creepy one. The creepy one. one? The we don't know what the heck is on the store. Yeah, exactly. What is it? I didn't guess as to what that symbol is. Like, is it is it like a weird creepy mask with like horns? Oh, I think it might be like a, an angel. Actually, I actually thought it was a mask with horns until I just looked at it again. It might be like a woman... It is a woman, guys. It's Queen Zeal sitting inside of the Mammon Machine. Oh, what? Dang. Yes, it is. What? What? I'm blown. You're absolutely right. I I always Holy saw it as a mask until my adult eyes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did too. I didn't look what? that closely at it, which makes sense. Oh, it's. So good. Respect. Oh, so we were going to talk about that fanfare. Oh, oh, oh I have a lot to say about that So much music. Uh, the fanfare. What is that last person? Was it like a 7th? 
da -da -da -da. <laughs> I can't sing it. I try to sing, but I can't. Yeah, I think it's a, it's just a, a seventh. It, um, the, the fanfare yeah. on the piano is just a seven chord. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a, it might be one of, another one of those minor major sevenths. I'm actually I think, not sure. I think it is. I think it is. Just it, w it with hearing, without being able, able to sit at a piano and dig it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there we are with those jazz sevenths showing up everywhere. So, the recognizing the crest, by the way, that just came to me as we were talking about oh, it. Oh! Yeah. I had not thought of that previously. Nice catch. Okay. Whoa. You said it with such authority that I was like, oh, he, he clearly figured this out in a different replay. <laughs> <laughs> I always used to think, by the I way, actually, that you would really steal a tonic from the rats. And it turns out the and rats the steal around. a tonic from you when you touch them. Yeah. So uh, you're not supposed to touch jerks. them. And I didn't know that as a kid. I just hit all the rats all the time. That's funny. What kind of genre is this music? Elevator? I was going to say kind of like a... Yeah, sort of elevator, sort of 90s, but a little bit more... I feel like it's the introduction to a bad movie theme, but the bad movie theme never comes in. It's just the percussive ah. introduction. Mm. It's got that kind of move, like action movie... The cool bass line. I mean, we've had the heavy bass before, but like the, something 80. about this reads is very, very 80s. Yeah, this is more 80s than 90s, I think. Yeah, more I definitely like agree with time. that it's 80s. Yeah. Yeah, like definitely related to the whole car aspect. Yeah. Um, the what is it about car culture in the future? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Hot rods are like all that's left. Yeah. I love the shadow sprite. Like all the different variations of this. I don't know why. Yeah. It's like cute but also threatening. Yeah, it's kind of a Pokemon. an effective burn sound effect from the fire. But yeah, um, you know, I had just brought up before the, the lack of a lot of real motion, that the, this bass pattern just keeps repeating over and over in the, mm -hmm. in the, what, whatever area we're in, <laughs> whatever abandoned cityscape. Is this Arwen. Lab yeah. 30? I don't even think we're supposed to remember what the name of this is. Yeah. But it's very static, right? You, you have the same, like, chords that don't really dissolve or go anywhere. Everything just loops four bars at a time. The okay. bass part is very active, but it's the same thing over and over again. It's certainly closer to the battle theme. Like, it's, it's not a harsh leap to go between these two. And as far as not yeah. resolving anywhere, keep in mind it's, that it's, the theme for the future is But You're Still Hungry. And I feel like the music right. leaves you wanting yeah. something as well. It doesn't give you a lot in general. Um, but so what differentiates it from a battle theme and tells you that you're more in an area is mostly tempo and rhythmic activity, mm -hmm. right, Julianne? Yeah. So you're right that it's like... It shares a lot of elements, and it's a seamless transition, but it's clearly not marked as battle theme. Right. I'm going to come back outside. I want to like, talk about this relaxed. overworld theme for a minute. Yes. Yes. The play is back. Uh, 
Oh, the future. Like, what are those percussion? Okay, I gotta turn up the volume. <laughs> yeah. So, like, what is being sampled here? The sort of, like, distant thing hitting a wind making something hit against okay. another thing. It sounds it like a wind chime, like you hang outside your house type of thing. Right, like something in the wind. It's really. just metal, like, banging against metal in the wind because everything is ruined. <laughs> That's yeah. how I always read it. That's how I always heard it, too. I feel like the sound of the wind really reinforces the visual as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the kind of dust, like, and debris floating everywhere. Yeah, it's, like, very tempestuous moving all around. Yeah, it's, it's remorseful. It's, like, even though it's percussive, it's that, like, unpitched sound that you hear. It's... I, I don't know, this this might be weird. This might be uh uneducated <laughs> approach to this, but like to me it's sort of like reminiscent of like just sort of like cries of cries of suffering or cries of regret or you know, that like unpitched just It's utterance. hollow, it has an echo to it. Yeah. And the like, string parts don't go anywhere. It's just these they, it doesn't like move in a way that makes sense. Yeah, especially like the moments uh, where there are common tones shared between chords that add to the stagnance of it. Yeah, it's just it's empty exhales. <laughs> it's not yeah. really, it's not really anything. Yeah, it's like it's sort of asthmatic. Like it's it it you can feel the pollution in those <laughs> chords. <laughs> oh, that's part of the game. I know we're probably not going to get there, but if we went back to like the the prehistoric period, there is one crazy connection there. I might just Ooh. bring it up because I don't think we're going to make it there tonight. Because yeah, that'll be session two probably. Yeah. Okay. But, bring it up so, real quick because I'm curious. So the character Isla. Do you guys know about her name? No. No. So I, when I was uh, in like. Fourth to sixth grade, I was a huge bookworm, and for some reason, my parents let me read a book, a series of books by Gene M. Owl called Clan of the Cave Bear, which is a series of books that was about a uh, Cro Magnon girl who was abandoned by her family or lost by her family accidentally and adopted by a uh, Neanderthal and was raised as a Neanderthal. <laughs> and, um,. That character, that main character of that series was a girl named Isla. Spelled the exact same way. And so when I played Chrono Trigger for the first time and I saw Isla introduced, I mean, there's like no way that's an accident, you know? Right. Yeah. There's absolutely yeah. no way. So it's a reference. It must be a reference to the, the GML series. There are many books in that wow. series. Um, and I shouldn't have been reading them as that's a That's really cool. Like, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah I, had no idea. I mean, they're, they're, they're great books, but they're like definitely like for adults like a lot of like sexual themes and stuff like that and like as a kid reading it i'm like i can't believe my parents let me read this <laughs> they definitely have a lot more faith in me than i do now you know <laughs> but um but no i mean they're, they're, they're great books and i think it's somebody on the translation team was super clever about that huh. or maybe i don't know actually i don't know the the history behind the translation of that name maybe maybe that's like a transliteration that comes from a japanese uh uh person who knew about this books too i don't know that's uh, interesting yeah oh, no, yeah. yeah check them out they're good, <laughs> good books. unfortunately we're not there we still have to deal with the future <laughs> but at least you get robo pretty soon Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. He's fun. I like him. I'm, I'm looking forward <laughs> to hearing uh, uh, his like yeah, 80s casting theme. <laughs> 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 it is never gonna give you up. Oh my god. It really is. This game rickrolled us before it was even a thing. Absolutely. Which, Absolutely. Which is fitting for a game about time travel. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so good.
Oh, it's funny hearing myself sing along to the music at the wrong time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really hard. No. Shouldn't do that. <laughs> I'm always singing, and I know that, like, you know, where I am in the stream is not where it lands in the stream and all that, but... <laughs> yeah. Eh. Good. Short of like get bringing an instrument out and playing it, sometimes I'm left with no other option. Yeah. yeah. I wish I had a better computer so that I could share my screen more directly with the three of you, so that you wouldn't be behind. Yeah, I'm sure. Whoa. Do I have reverb on? Yes, I do. Whoops. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a way that we can figure out how to do some sort of screen sharing thing that won't be too, uh, too, uh, devastating to your, to your machine. I'm sure there's something that we can figure out when somebody has time. Yeah, I should look into that. Time. <laughs> <laughs> this oh. game is all about time. <gasps> true. That's true. We should have said something funny about trigger warnings or something else topical. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. You know it's the millennial fair. <laughs> you know, when I blog, when I when I do the obligatory uh, blogging where I just insert the, the videos of these, I'm gonna refer to all of them as trigger warnings. Yeah. <laughs> Please. That'll be, that'll be my title for that, that series. <laughs> it occurred to me to, to put up the Final Fantasy ones. I was like, oh yeah. This, like, relates to things I should be blogging about. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I have, like, 17 half-done drafts on that blog. I, I need to, like, get on it oh, at some point. On <laughs> One thing at a time. Minutes. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on in. I'm simultaneously. I, being I hear rambunctiousness. I love how this guy dies holding the last good seed <laughs> in his arms. Like, it's an awesome, hopeful <laughs> reference, and it's a cool but, thing for biology as well. Oh, she's working on some bullshit. Yes. <laughs> she messaged me out of nowhere, and she was like, hey, do you have any ideas for a part for, like, the local suit? Small string quartet, and at least <laughs> to a primary. Oh, boy, do I? And I was like, Doug, you gotta mute yourself. <laughs> yeah. He's paying no attention. Anyway, the rest of the, the, rest of the, the rat is more than just a statue. Everybody whisper things about Doug while he's um, away from the computer. No. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll join you in a little bit. All right. Yale sucks. <laughs> Hi, Doug. <laughs> I got the rat on the first time. That was awesome. That's why he couldn't hear us. He didn't have his headphones in. Sorry. Yeah, I had to. I had to greet people at the door. My bad. Hey, wait a minute. I'm hearing in the background. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it's okay. I just. I only have one degree from that school. Whatever. It's fine. Um. <laughs> oh, also, yeah. Awesome on getting the rat the first time. And we were too busy yeah, talking about good. Time, but thumbs up. <laughs> what, what, kind of, what kind of trash? Well, I, I guess I can always watch the video back. I'll just make sure to fast forward to. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, there's no timestamp. Dang. Uh, I'll, uh -huh. I'm gonna fast forward back here, and then I'm gonna hear all the things you said about me while I was gone. All the things. You'll see. We didn't. We didn't really get enough of a chance. It's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was some. Uh, Actually, Disco Cactus members. I don't know if you guys know about my band, Disco oh, Cactus. Oh, yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they just walked in. Hey, here's an uh, forced silence, but this feels just more like a scene change than anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, you would jump directly to this sound. I paused longer than the game expects you to there. Yeah. We haven't talked about that track yet, because it has that, like, weird Anyway, well, this is an important moment. We'll talk about it on the way out. Yeah. All right. <laughs> this sounds like an alarm to me more than like a computer booting up when you first turn it on. I think the computer's going to explode. It's... Yeah. Yeah, it's like, like it's just, 
it's really old. It's like not fanned properly. Yeah. Like it's not a healthy sounding computer. Oh yeah. Ah. Uh, I. Okay. I guess. Okay. We'll, we'll watch this happen. Oh yeah, this is important. What does oh, this God. button do? It's really just an Amazon dash button, like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, it's Lavos. Oh wait, so in the game, doesn't the game start? What year does the game start in? Does the game start? One thousand AD. Just one thousand. This is nineteen ninety nine. Right. Uh, this pipe organ here is totally recalling catastrophe slash Kefka, by the way, in yeah, the spirit definitely. of villainy I agree. I, I, generally. I agree. It's all half step descent too. Yeah. It's kind of that also Spruxer Thuster thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that fourth? Hold on a second. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're just parallel fourths, right? I think so. Yeah. Oh, you. I love that you have your xylophone <laughs> at hand. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a marimba, Ryan, but yes, I do. Ha <laughs> <laughs> All the time. Um, I never, yeah, I'm I never going to forget, Doug, there was one year you brought an electric marimba to MAGFest, and I'd never right. even heard of yeah, it before, it and I was like, holy, cat. holy yeah. crap. That was fun. I brought that because I was like, I'll never be able to play, bring a vibraphone to MAGFest. What could I ever bring to MAGFest to play to play Malt's at? And then eventually I realized, no, I can just bring a vibraphone to MAGFest, and I started doing that. <laughs> Ah, uh, there's a theme. Okay, one thing I wanted to mention about this part of the game in general when you go to the future is that I think just in terms of like plot or like plot development and like writing, it's really awesome that it like okay, so like you're like sort of chaotically traveling through time, right? You don't have a lot of control. The only reason that you know that you have an adventure to go on is because you in the plot you transport to the bad ending, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like you don't you don't actually find out like what you're fighting or what you have to do. All you know is the outcome of what happens yeah. if you don't do whatever you have to do. I think that's yeah. awesome. That I think it's just a great story. It makes perfect sense for a time travel narrative, right? I mean yeah. isn't Back to the Future too kind of the same thing? Like, oh shit, Trump is president. <laughs> I mean Beth oh, is oh. president. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> and, you know, Marty's mom is, is like, married to him because George is dead and, like, everything sucks. Yeah. Oh, God. I should watch Back to the Future too, which I have not done. I, I always had a soft spot for it uh, as a kid. I, I really, I liked, I liked the idea that there, those, those tiny little pizzas could rehydrate into full-size pizzas. <laughs> I was like, that's going to be the future. Like, I always the liked the interaction between like the Under the Sea dance scenes in 2 versus 1. I thought that was mind-blowing oh, yeah. technology back then. Really well done. Really well done. Uh, there, was, there was something else I was going to say on that. But I'll just say that my 30th birthday was an enchantment under the sea dance, and it was amazing. Uh, and uh -huh. Ryan actually sent me a beautiful track Uh that played at my birthday uh, at the bar, and it was a, a chip tune. Um, uh, which one was it? Was it Earth Angel that, that you chip tuned? Yeah, it, it's, it's Earth Angel with uh, Sephiroth's theme in the middle instead of the dialogue yeah. from Back to the Future. Yeah. All done in uh, Andrew Versa's, and he actually mastered it for me, so shout out to him. All it done in his new Super Audio Cart tech. That was, Aha, that was so Super cool. Audio Cart. Impact Soundworks. Well, buy Impact Soundworks. I'm a good employee. <laughs> I really like this track here. This is the first time we hear it. And this kind of establishes Doan as the descendant of the Guardia line in my mind. Like, he recognizes mm -hmm. that 
things could have been better. He shouldn't be this way. And I love the the reverb. Da 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 da. Everything's just yeah. repeated twice, but it makes yeah. it sound like an echo, like a very close echo. Actually, it's funny you bring that up because part of Super Audio Cart um, is the, the the Impact Soundworks plugin is the SNES verb um, that we actually released as a separate plugin that does this effect. Yeah. For you. It's the same as in uh, Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. Yeah. With the main theme, mm-hmm. they do that too. It's more subtle. Mm-hmm. SNES verb. And the just the kind of bell tone. There's there's an openness and a hope to this theme, yeah. even though it's it's really in a bad place. Yeah, it kind of sucks. It's like, oh, people of the future, you gave us hope that, like, we can obliterate your reality. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about it that I way. I like as a to kid. think that when you rewrite history, though, these same people still exist, but then yeah. their lives don't suck. Right, Actually, right, in the right. end of the game, That's you the see Atropus, which gives credence to that idea. Oh, good. yeah. By the way, if I was feeling really ambitious, you can go to the sewer access right now far oh enough God. to get to get a good why weapon for you, chrono why and would then you, you do that to yourself oh no because it's I mean, the third box you don't have to go that far but i'm not going to mm. do it because i'll probably mess it up on stream ah uh, the chord progression in this the overworld music is so great what is it though what is the what is the chord progression hold on <laughs> i'll stop oh, after the bike ride to bike. check Sounds right to me. So he's still hovering around to C minor, but what I really like is how he goes between G minor and B major, but he yeah. keeps the D on top. So yeah. that you hear basically the same. Um, I mean, like uh, later on in like the B section of the theme, it goes into some other areas, but he keeps that D steady, which is like the placidity of the yeah. situation there. And you know, like nothing's really changing. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too deeply into it, but that, like, to me, that that is one of the things that emphasizes the loneliness of the situation they're in, you know? Mm. So this guy is totally Chuck Berry with a microphone, or a mi- motorcycle on his back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> He's even identified as the man, and he gets lines of dialogue as the man, which I think is the most 90s thing I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> it, and then the way that he calls them babe, like, that's, yeah. that's very 90s. <laughs> Babe. Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, <laughs> like Johnny be good. He's supposed to be Chuck Berry on a motorcycle, I'm convinced. Yeah. Johnny well, is bad. Like, well, yeah, his... it's Johnny T. Bad, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Oh my god. That's the theme, right? That's his like theme. what it's called or something? Uh, no, that's in that's Final Fantasy VI. Oh, that's Final Fantasy VI. Okay, but well, his whatever. Theme, god damn it. The <laughs> theme yeah. is a fear. It's, it's the theme is very like like eighties metal, which you'd expect it to be a little more like classic rock, but yeah, I guess classic rock isn't uh, electronic enough for the future. <laughs> yeah. So we have to go with the eighties. Right. Well, whatever. The game was made in ninety five. They didn't know what the future was yet. <laughs> Well, and also remember that in Chrono Trigger, the present was 1000. 1999 yeah. is when the world ends. That's true. So that hadn't even yeah. happened yet in our get, world. Yeah, so like their, their frame of reference, like the futuristic could be like our 80s yeah, in right. terms of music. Is Real there, quick, yeah. number one, I'm the best. Number two, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Luca's like theme as fanfare again. Yeah, yeah. you're right. So... In, in this timeline, do you think they really saw, like, the 1990s as, like... Or, like, do you think that their version of 1999 is, like, in, supposed to be in line with our version of 1999? Do you think that's, like... No, not I at all. I don't think so. Not at no. all. I think 1000 is supposed to be, like, our present day-ish. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, none of the times really line up with ours. Because when... The Middle Ages in this game is, what, 600? 
weird. Yeah, and the, that sort Whereas, of lines up. It's kind of medieval. It's it's medieval, but like, dude, we hadn't even had like Charlemagne yet. We hadn't even had like notated chant in music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we don't even have notation yet. Yeah. We don't got no uh nooms. <laughs> yeah. No nooms. We had some non-diastematic notation. Wait. Yeah, before like 1,000. Oh, I don't even remember. I've it was about 900s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Thank you. Know, the actual, course, like year, the actual year 1999. Like I remember celebrating that at like my house with my cousins and being like, oh my god, Lavos is gonna come. <laughs> Oh, see, I didn't play this game until after 1999. Ah! So. Because I started high school in 2000, 2001, I think, and that was, it was shortly after I started high school that I played this game. Ah, mm. oh, so we're like exactly the same age then. I think so, probably. Well, Did I was. Did you graduate born... high school in 05? Yeah, 05. Yeah, yeah, that was me too. 87. So. Born in 87. Nice. I'm 86. Yeah. Well, Perfect. I was. I was a little, I was like a weird age for high school. It was like, I'm a September birthday, so it's like, oh, yeah. go one way or the other. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, I share a birthday with John Cage, which is like, as a Whoa. musician, my claim to fame. I share a birthday with Juliet Gordon Lowe, the founder of Girl Scouts. Oh, shit. So. Nice. Dope. I've been to many Juliet Lowe rallies. Excellent. <laughs> Okay, I share a death day with Beethoven. Oh, not Beethoven. Mozart. I don't share a birthday with any musician. I don't. How would you know well, whose death day you share? You don't know when you're gonna die. No, I'm uh, sorry. I share Yikes, a birthday that's macabre. With the death <laughs> <I'm> day just... <laughs> of. You could know when you're gonna die if you just oh. take matters into your own hand. Okay. On Getting that note. Bad. On that note, nobody watched 13 Reasons Why. That's my public service announcement. I started and I just couldn't... I just thought it was so silly. I, like, watched it's, the first episode. It, it, hey, hey guys, I've got well something done. here. Okay. Uh, this theme is <laughs> appearing to be Luca's theme right now. Like, she's very wistful. Oh. And she's looking down. She's like, machines aren't evil. Humans make them that way. It occurs oh, to me now, I is know. she thinking about line. her mom right now? Yeah, I mean, I think we've got a a nice case of theme ambiguity for a female character here again. Contender. <laughs> Cuz arguably Luca yeah. benefits the most from all the time travel, right? Cuz uh yeah. Oh gosh, what's her name? Lara. Uh Lara, yeah. right? Yeah. L A R A. Uh Lara Lara gets uh her uh she's not made a paraplegic, right? Oh, it's totally Rick Astley time. Oh my yes. gosh, Rick Astley. Rick Astley. <laughs> also, aside from the fact that I love the industrial percussion here, I have nothing to say about this except how did they not get sued for this? <laughs> I can sing it like to the actual. Chorus. It really is. There's an amazing yeah. YouTube mashup. In fact, would somebody please Google that? Uh, yeah, and I'm post it in it. chat because it's epic. It makes me happy. Nice bit of characterization there with Marl to argue that titles are awful, don't use them. Hmm. Aww. The Robo Roll, they call it. Aww. That's Fantastic. So good. <laughs> Which lady do I take, by the way? Holy crap! <laughs> I'm just 
listening to it. I can't. <laughs> oh my gosh. Everyone, like, just pause for a second. Everyone go go click this link right this second. <laughs> like, this is too good. <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> all right, I'm I'm gonna like post that to all my social media real quick. Brb. All right, <laughs> uh, which lady still... stays behind? I need a vote from um, uh, everybody. I like to take. Um... Oh gosh, who do I usually take? Oh god, I think I always took Marl or Marle. I don't know how we're saying her name. I think it's Marl. Um. She's good. I mean, she's good if you think you're going to need healing, but I usually like to take Luca because of her, like, connection with Robo. And and they get some good, like, dual techs together. Yeah, you're right. I always so was, like, I, I really, that like, more- into the Chrono and Marl shipping thing from very early on. Uh, I have a feeling my I- end party is either going to be Chrono and both ladies or Chrono Frog Magus. But Robo's mm-hmm. not going to be in either party, so it doesn't matter which girl I take, really. Right. Uh, I'll take Luca to I make usually, the boss fight go faster. The ladies. Hashtag ladies. <laughs> oh, whoops, I did it backwards. Let me see if I can... Uh... Who will stay behind. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I don't. I I guess I don't really ship Chrono in this game. You know when there's like the point point where you get the Chrono doll. Yeah. I won't give any other spoilers related to that, but like there's the doll that he just like he's Chrono and like his character to me is a rag doll. Like he never talks. <laughs> you know, he has no personality. Like it's like the people in Twilight. Like you're supposed to be the character or something. Like, yeah. So they have like no personality they're just a vessel for the player there have been multiple times where i have made decisions and chrono's the one who speaks them yeah yeah like events you choose you choose what chrono does that's very important later in the game yeah the, all the other npcs have a very limited amount of agency but they do have yeah. it but they chrono have has character. none chrono only does what i say right right it's and that's that's the thing with avatars is they have kind of a, a spectrum of how much you are the character and they end up being just an extension of you versus having an actual personality where they may be less relatable because they're not you but they they may be narratively better <laughs> Now, it's interesting how this factory music is different from something like the Final Fantasy VI um, factory music. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. the, the, that factory music we talked about, like the hammer and the kind of like 19th century... Very <laughs> like, kind of industrial... Yeah. Industrial... Sounds. And this is like post-industrial revolution for sure. This is like more sophisticated tech it's mostly like the groovy kind of similar to the trash yard trash heap music mm. the sort of it's more coherent to this kind of 80s 90s i don't know how to I don't, i'm really bad at genre this is more melodic though this is like a listenable piece of music whereas the factory yeah. in final fantasy 6 It's just industrial sounds, mostly. Yeah.
looking at the viewer list in our chat right now. Can somebody please tell me what where the name Hoagie Time comes from? <laughs> Julianne. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember where Hoagie Time comes from, actually. Other than Hoagie being the word for like a submarine sandwich yeah. in the mid-Atlantic region. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a big fan of those. So. <laughs> okay, it's fine. You know, you're it's allowed to like. Time. You're know. allowed to like sandwiches. No, not 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 nice <laughs> at all. Big fan. I've had my username since fourth grade, and I haven't changed it since, which has caused some problems in my personal life, but not too many, honestly. Real. <laughs> Dude, that's actually a pretty sweet name to stumble upon that young because like all of my usernames from like middle school I'm not even gonna admit to them they're so bad. <laughs> I mean I, yeah, I put good. a lot of thought into it. I, I I give myself credit. I give like fourth grade Doug a lot of credit because like yeah. drum was like, well I play music and that's the instrument I play, so that's part of it. And the Ultima was me going, well, I like video games, and there's this game, Final Fantasy VI, I really like, and there's an attack called Ultima, so... See, that didn't Ultima work nearly as well for me. I played Diablo and had to have a handle, which is the first time I needed one. Like, Diablo <laughs> 1. And I was like, well, I like Cyan Garmon from Final Fantasy VI, so we Cyan, and I'm gonna kill lots of things to death in Diablo, so I'm gonna 86 them, and I'm Cyan 86. Is my first thing. <laughs> Aww. Not bad. That's pretty good, though. Wait, yeah, I, I tried for like really? deep stuff. Like I put a lot of thought into mine, so they're they're just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like when I think back to the list of potential screen names I made. There were a couple on that list that I'm really glad I didn't choose because I was also playing Banjo Kazooie at that time, and mm. so I think I almost put something from Banjo Kazooie in my screen name, which would have been really embarrassing. <laughs> Because <laughs> every name in Banjo Kazooie is super dumb. <laughs> yeah. Uh, random aside actually. from the chat, Kate, I love that Canoe Mail is Canadian Hotmail. Canoe Mail. <laughs> okay. All right, Kate. Actually, speaking of the chat, Kate, you're you're at Wesleyan, right? Um, Forest Girl KG, and then yes, we also have Karen, who is from Hart. I'm really mm -hmm. seriously considering making like a Connecticut VGM meetup type thing, and trying to get people involved in that, uh, including. <laughs> uh, just straight up yes. yes. <laughs> I'm not sure yes. what the yes is to. I'm guessing it's to everything. <laughs> but I also found out like uh, the um, there's a the, the uh, radio host an NPR classical music radio host uh, Kate Remington, who is a uh, big video game music person as well. And I'm realizing like okay there are enough there are enough people in Connecticut at this point from all over that there should be some sort of like meetup or something. So. I might try to coordinate something. The, the, every time I do this, it like kind of nails that in because another person pops in in the chat who's from Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, this has, to, this has to happen. So, random trivia. There's a place in this dungeon where you can learn the codes to maneuver that crane. I don't know yeah. where it is anymore. I just know the codes. Yeah. Well then. Oh yeah, I have no idea. Oh, I think it's yeah, this th computer monitor right here, actually. This is like muscle memory. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I don't have to think too hard about this one. <laughs> Some of the weirdest posts of mine on Facebook get all of the likes, and I just don't understand. Like... I did that, like, which 90s TV character are you? <laughs> you know, where it morphs your picture. Yeah. Like, that's getting more likes than just about anything I've posted in the past month. I'm like, Funny. cool. <laughs> uh, hmm. I was Topanga Lawrence, by the way. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Uh, she also went to Yale. Oh, no, she didn't, right? I kind of 
was up because she went. You know, the later seasons, Corey. I'm kind of fuzzy on. So Me too. I actually don't really. I wasn't an obsessive watcher. I was a TGIF watcher, and then mm. later on, not so dedicated. Yeah. But it depends what photo you use, because uh, I tried it after I got that one with my current profile picture, and I I think I got, like, Buffy Summers, and I was like, I, there's no way I look like her at all. So, <laughs> like, thank you. <laughs> but, no. Oh, were those the controls <laughs> that you were looking into? Yeah, baby. Yeah, musically, it's interesting. You guys talking about like the the, the factory theme of Final Fantasy VI? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and how like the we're still in the same period of time, which was so desolate and sparse before, but this environment in the same period of time is super upbeat and groovy. Mm-hmm. But actually, the harmonic language isn't that much different than what we're here right. before. Right, yeah. And now, it's got the same coolness that, like, the lab areas do. You yeah. know, where they're not actually that stressful. Yeah. There's kind of a sense of, like, stasis and mm-hmm. nothingness. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. There's desolation. I wonder how much of that was intentional from the composer or how much of that was just the composer's style, you know? Like, right. Okay, it was about. Yeah, like, like the, those underlying chords, yeah, they're sort of like the, that overworld theme. Yeah, it's triadic, it's, it's, there's not, yeah. it's not a lot of motion, it's very placid. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I always think it's really interesting analyzing video game music like this, because, you know, for, for us coming from academia, where we analyze, like, classical music, or, like, mu- the, the, the music from our, from the, our Western canon, you know? We're dealing with like really intentional decisions that were made, like composers who are writing music with like the the influence and the the, the pressure of like hundreds of years of tradition behind them. But then when we analyze video game music, we're not necessarily analyzing it from that perspective. These composers aren't necessarily feeling that pressure behind them, you know. Mm-hmm. So I wonder so often, like, how much of this is is being uh, concluded based on on the tradition and based on like, oh, the composer made this decision because clearly he must be trying to infer this. Or how much of that is just distilled intuition that we're, we're creating context and connections from. You know? I, I, yeah, I think that's a, I mean, you can only really grasp a lot of that from interviews, but even then I think that it's hard to know, you know, how, a lot of it's like from their their music education too, sort of what is valued. I mean, they were all, some of them had no real music education. <laughs> yeah. Some exactly. of them, some of them really did though. Um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You could tell. So it's 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 interest. It's like an interesting question, which is sort of why my dissertation focuses more on like player experience rather than like kind of designer intent and. Right. Right. Because right. it's really hard. It's also, I mean, you can you can track a lot of clear influences, uh-huh. but it's but also ultimately really like hard. you can sit there yeah. and play. Yeah. This sounds like this all day long, especially in yeah. Omatsu scores. But like, yeah. is that is that actually that interesting? <laughs> like, right. Right. you can also see, a good question. <laughs> you end up just playing a game of like spot the influence that you can't even prove legitimately one way or the other. Yeah. Especially from Uematsu, because he's always like very cagey about that. Yeah. Uh, and so then it's like, well, what are you actually saying? Right. You know, and that's that's where like you have to find your other angle in. Like, you know, I think uh, you know Julianne and Ryan have this like user experience center and like that. You know, the the sound making you a better player and kind of teaching you and. Uh, you know, I, I take the disability angle as just like 
hey, guess what? Music participates in, in, you know, constructing these discourses, but it's not specific to games that already exist in the real world. Like, <laughs> yeah, that to me is a lot more interesting. But then in footnotes, I will go to town with that and say like, oh yeah, here's that Zarathustra reference right. in the opening yeah. of Final Fantasy VI. Like, it's all there right. and it has a place, but it's not right. the argument itself. Yeah. Right. There's yeah, also yeah, a totally. certain amount of that type of looking that you can see more than actually exists. Mm-hmm. That's also true. Because we that's... want it to be there. It's kind of a confirmation bias. And mm-hmm. it might be there in the way that you don't want it to be. Example, uh, also Sprock Zarathustra is probably really saying it's an homage to uh, the movie, not to... Yeah. 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 Because it's far more likely, given Umatsu's specific background, that he's seen the film than that he actually knows classical music history very well. Yeah. Yeah, And I think Kubrick, in general, is the source of a lot of kind of pop um, art music knowledge. So, yeah, you know. (laughs) Yep. Uh, uh, absolutely. Liggety and yeah, <laughs> uh, and like all the, all of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely true. Huh. But yeah, that's actually a point that has come up in a few. I feel like Will Gibbons has made that argument, like the. Um, catching references that are actually references to 2001 in particular. That soundscape is so influential. Yeah. 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 Well, it's like a big chain of of events, you know? (laughs) I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, know, our standard rep influences other pieces and perhaps just based on our own, you know, specific musical experience where we're drawn to, like, the source rather than the the offshoot that ended up inspiring it, as opposed to the original. Yeah. I, yeah, I just refer to it as kind of this sort of constantly remediated influences, yeah. particularly sourced from 19th century art music. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you can trace things more to, like, Italian opera, and some things are more seem like Viennese, but... Um, you know, it gets it gets funneled through film and cartoons and yeah, and all of these traditions and and even popular music and so yeah, what's what's really the point of being like, well, this is clearly this Wagner thing, you know what? So what? <laughs> Where it yeah. gets interesting is you know then what what is the perceived function? Like, what, they're obviously going to that because they think this is a good correlate for this. You know, this is this is representing some sort of effect I'm going for. Right. And so so it, it ends up relating to function in really interesting ways. And then I think you have an argument. But you have to... It's like you can't just stop at the, the influence itself, like you say. Exactly, yeah, because, I mean, obviously it's not arbitrary, the musical choices are arbitrary, and there's a kind of musical meaning that gets designed into the game for clear reasons, and unclear reasons sometimes. Yeah. But I think it's interesting, like, my whole, my whole spiel is like, well, the process of play, and, like, play is an activity that changes or renews or, like, obliterates some of these original musical meanings, or plays with the musical meanings itself, in interesting ways, and so you come out with different kinds of associations and different kinds of um, and different kinds of meanings for genres like twelve bar blues being associated with like a coliseum or something. Right. Like that. Yeah. Right. You know, <laughs> like what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we talked about Chrono's agency a couple minutes ago. I yeah. really like that you retain control during the cutscene that just played. Yeah. But you can't oh, do you anything. Can't, you're ineffectual. You're powerless to stop Robo getting trashed. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you'll feel the entire time you play that Dragon Cancer. Mm. <laughs> if you play. Oh, if you play. oh no. Yeah, I want to <laughs> play that game. Oh yeah. yeah, as a parent of two, I'm going to stay away from that. Please, oh. Yeah, it'll wreck you. Dude, and well, one I- of the other things that's very haunting about it is the graphic design is very intentionally kind of 
polygon blocky. It's not quite FF7 level. It's a little more sophisticated, but it's it's like they're very faceless. Yeah. And that also kind of adds a very eerie. And the, also the representation of the cancer itself is 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 abstract, um, and very symbolic. Right. But right. yet drawn from I, I'm pretty sure drawn from the actual brain scans um, uh, because they they have these like kind of black tendrils and they kind of yeah. take over the environment in interesting ways. Yeah. Wow. And it's this thing yeah. that is often coexisting with whatever else is happening in that scene that you're playing. So. Right. Well, yeah, one of the reasons that I want to play it so badly is because actually my my mom just went through like a cancer endeavor this past year um, where she had two, she was diagnosed with two different forms of cancer, like literally out of the blue. Oh, and wow. Luckily, like they caught everything early enough that they were able to oh, treat guys, it. Oh, guys, I lost. No. Now. You lost? Really? Oh, no. I know, We're right? talking about all this helplessness. Uh, right, right, right. When wow. Cancer, oh my god. Cancer. And, yeah, <laughs> when was that's your last save? Oh, no. That's going to take us too far back. Yeah. No, not far back at all. Anyway, anyway. I, I mean, the, the point that I was trying to make is like, you know, she, you know, it's not like a tragedy or anything. She's doing fine. But it did make me realize, like, just like how real that is. And how much You're going to have such a different it, perspective you know? on it, too, yeah. having had a yeah. personal experience with it. Yeah. You know, I was just purely putting myself in the shoes of, like, oh my god, yeah. what if I were a parent whose one-year-old was going through this? And oh my god, that was yeah. hard enough. That was yeah. hard enough. Like, I, I don't I mean, think I could play it, like, after having kids. Right. I <laughs> I'm mean, glad like, I played it when I did. Even when, like, you know, even when you get the news and your perspective, like, and the, the, the mm -hmm. message that you're given is, like, but don't worry, we caught it early, you know, chances are really right. great, you know, we're really positive, blah, blah, blah. There's still that like notion of like, oh, but this is that thing. This is that thing that like yeah. does that does people in, you know. Mm -hmm. I will also yeah. say that the reason that the pacifist run of Undertale is so emotional for me is a similar sort of personal life experience. And mm -hmm. for those of you who haven't done it yet, I'm curious if you can figure out what that is. Mm. Because um it's it, it is a very actually personal thing it's something that i went through very directly that is referenced in that part of, in the end of the game when you do the pacifist run huh. um so if, if you get there if you play it let me know if you figure it out I'm, now I'm really i have curious. To. i know now i have to <laughs> i will fight more responsibly and not trigger that massive counterattack <laughs> next time by the way good <laughs> it set us back about five minutes that's not bad but yeah, it's also uh, last year. You know, ever actually, uh, ever since my, my marriage ended, I'm now very sensitive to infidelity plot lines uh, in all yeah. media. You know, having gone through it, you have a different take on it. And exactly. even just watching, um, pretty shortly after he moved out, I watched Jessica Jones and I blitzed it. I loved that show. But she's investigating so many people's affairs. Yeah. And and it just like, it was like a punch to the gut every time. I was like, oh, why do people have to be like this? Right, yeah. yeah. You know, and it, it, give, it gives such a different perspective. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. I mean, like, and that's one of the things that really impresses me about like a really well-made, a very sincere game like that. When it's not just that they reference the situation, it's when they reference it very well and very empathetically. You know, mm -hmm. when when you when you when you've been through a situation like that and you experience the reference in the game and you go, "Oh my God, that's that hit the nail right on the head." You know, another exactly one right. that I think is a little harder for some, maybe some people to relate to, and I'll, I'll be curious who else has played it is Sibel. Um, another kind of visual novel style game about a teenage girl um, but for someone who grew up with like AOL Instant Messenger in the uh -huh. 90s um, there's <laughs> she starts talking to you know she starts talking to a guy that doesn't live in her state and yeah. and they, they flirt and they, it gets more and more intense and they talk about meeting in person and like I, that really hit me as just being the right generation to go. Oh, sweetie, like I, I've oh, had, yeah. I've had these conversations, and it was very yeah. uncomfortable and kind of voyeuristic. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it was also to me very relatable. But I think to someone that didn't have that experience, that game ends up just being about the voyeurism. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and there's also a bit of an inevitability there. There's not a lot of branching that you can do. 
you just yeah. kind of follow the story. You know, yeah, it's it's interesting. I definitely had that experience at least once in my youth when I was on AOL Instant Messenger, you know. <laughs> and I think there was like there was like some Pokemon message board that I was posting on or something like that, right? And then there was like, you know, I was I'm making friends, like I'm I'm involved in a community. And like I remember in my own naivety, like and this is there's a little bit of like gender rehearsal going on here, but I do think it applies. So there's like in my na- naivety, like I remember, like, there was one person who was like, hey, would you want to be, like, online boyfriend-girlfriend sort of thing, you know? <laughs> and they were like, okay, sure. And, like, I think after that initial question, like, I don't know if we ever even talked again <laughs> after that. But, like, I'm, I'm looking back at, like, the generation's past and, like, looking at, like, you know, my own younger sister, like, if she was ever in that situation, like, Doug, what the hell were you thinking? Right. You don't know who that person was. You know yeah. who this person was. Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then like, you know, from the other side of it, like, they didn't know who I was. Like, it's not a, it's not safe for anybody, mm-hmm. you know. But I, I don't know. I was like, what, like, twelve, thirteen at mm-hmm. the oldest, you know. Yeah, I mean, and it really did. That was with that game. I kind of hesitate to call it a game. It didn't really feel like a game again because there weren't, there wasn't a lot of agency for the player. Um. I really did feel that, like, oh my god, I remember being, like, that vulnerable. And, <laughs> you know, that there, yeah. you do test these boundaries. You're, like, you don't know how to flirt, and you're you're tempting to, like, walk a line, and you have no subtlety, and, like, I don't know. It was just so... Yeah. Ugh. I own that game, because I remember reading Nina Freeman write about it, and I was like, ooh, yeah. I want this, but I've I not really played it. Right I'd be really curious to get... Everyone I've talked to that has actually played it has been a female who's about my age. Um, and so the, they are, have all come back with the, oh my god, yeah, totally. Um, I'd be curious to get other perspectives from different ages and, and from guys that, that play through the game. All right, I'll bump it up to the top of my It's, it's short. Cube. I mean, you'll finish it in a few hours. It's, 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 you know, you can do it over a couple short sessions. All right, here we go. I must not trigger the massive counterattacks. So Kate brings up learning how to flirt and model relationships online or in games seems like it can go horribly wrong. This kind of reminds me of a conversation we were having on Facebook about... I don't want to interrupt, Dana, but really quick, I can move around. I wanted to emphasize it now that we're in real time. Oh, yeah. Walked away. He'll tell me not to. Anyway, more about Sibel. Um, yeah. Huh. We were... So I posted an article, it was about Harvest Moon and Stardew Valley and kind of actually modeling terrible relationships. The idea that you just, oh. like, give the girl the right oh, yeah. gift over right. and over again. And, and then, I read like, an she, awesome article about this exact thing. Yeah. It, it could be the same one I posted. You shut it, up. It was... <laughs> Sorry, not you guys. Not you guys. <laughs> 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 terrible relationship. <laughs> And, yes, Kate, Stardew Valley um, and Harvest Moon is the farming thing. You're right. Yeah, yeah. So it was the, like, basically, these games taught me horrible lessons because, you know, in, in the real world, I, I gave this girl I liked a gift, but it was so out of the blue and it didn't work, you know, because yes. that's not how people are. Wait, and, did you post that? And that's how I know about that article? I that's read that. possible. <laughs> yeah, I definitely read that. that must and we that. were having a whole time. I think Ryan started by basically saying, you know, what games do relationships with any nuance they're all kind of a plug and play and like a conversation tree you know and then you get a result even stuff um i'm trying to think of even some of the examples we mass effect up. is like mass their guide to say how to sleep with the person the most efficiently right 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 yeah. um or... and then i brought up having a little bit more freedom in a game like the sims because it's basically a dollhouse and the relationship interactions are more nuanced you can't just do the same thing over and over again because the person gets annoyed with you yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. But there's also not a lot of depth. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't yeah. really take the relationship. Like, you have arbitrary steps you can take, but the relationship doesn't feel organic, despite yeah. all of that. It's about as close as I've seen it get in a game. Okay, back to dogs. You know what I think the best <laughs> relationship building I've seen in a game in a while is? And I think it's in Breath of the Wild when you encounter a dog. 
and all you have to do is stand around it for long enough and the dog likes you more. <laughs> there's like, there's an animation above the dog that appears when you hang out with the dog long enough and it makes it want to follow you around. That's all uh, you have. Cause it my trusts brother, you. I don't know if my brother is still hanging around, but he was saying that a dog, he was trying to do that, but then the dog bit him. Really? Ah! Yeah, and it, that it hurt, like hurts you. Like it actually hurts you. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I haven't played it yet. I mean, <laughs> I, I gave, I gave the dog food. The, the dog liked that, but I also just like ran in circles near the dog, and the dog liked that for some reason. And I crouched and the dog, the dog like that. Like for there was, I definitely wasted like a good thirty minutes just like trying to figure out how to get this dog on my team. Aww. Chat, that's see great. You can do. But man, yeah, I, I love yeah. the. The, the Harvest Moon, Stardew Valley, sorry, Stardew Valley article is amazing. That's you just and Stardew was, Valley, like in Harvest Moon, you had to work for it. You actually had to go into the girl's bedroom and check her diary, which like felt so <laughs> invasive. Yeah. And I remember, like, even though it's it's an it's a game mechanic, right? Like you can just walk in and check. But I always felt like she would know, and it would somehow like get in the way <laughs> of yeah. what I was mm. trying to do. You know, hmm. that like, oh, if she knew I was reading her diary, she wouldn't trust me, I'll lose hearts. Ah. Even though that doesn't actually have a thing. I felt yeah. like, like morally not okay checking the diary. So yeah. I would just kind of guess yeah. uh, how serious it was right. based on the responses they would give me to stuff. But Stardew Speak Valley, you can just go in your menu. It's not as much work. You can yeah. just see like how your relationship is progressing and you get to see different cutscenes. So it's right. a little bit more, and there's a lot more choices. I didn't post about this back in the Facebook thread on this, but I feel like the best relationships in video games are written narratives in which the player has relatively little agency in how they progress. I'm thinking mm -hmm. like oh. the Prince of Persia, the Sands of Time, the Prince and Pharaoh. Mm. I wanted to uh, talk actually briefly, it's kind of digressing from this, but when Ryan was talking about, about the agency of the player during um, the robo battle, and mm -hmm. um, how you can still move around and try to interfere and they won't let you. And mm -hmm. my perspective of that when playing this game, it's really interesting that you bring that up because my perspective when playing the game was that I didn't move my, I didn't move Chrono at all because emotionally- you didn't think you could. Well, not even that I didn't think I could, I didn't think it was appropriate. There's uh. something really intense going on and I just like, my reaction to that is I shouldn't be involved, you know? Yeah. This isn't, this isn't my, this isn't my place. It's not appropriate for me to get involved. And it actually added a lot to the whole inserting myself into the character of Chrono for me. Yeah. That I chose not to behave at that moment, you know? Hmm. <laughs> I can I never know. hear Robo theme again. <laughs> I, I know, right? <laughs> Hang on to your shorts. Are, are we going? Oh, we're going. Ah, oh. let's get out of here. Oh. They just did like a bit like a Sailor together. Moon thing. Yeah, what yeah. was that? I don't remember that. Yeah. That's very the Dragon Ball Z, light. guys. Uh, close enough. <laughs> oh, here we are. Oh, here it is. <gasps> the end of time. All right, we got to talk about the end of time music. More piano, a high ostinato type stuff. Waltz. Yes, you're right. It's it, it's not a waltz. Like, it doesn't read as like dance waltz though. This ain't Strauss, you know. <laughs> like, well, until the until the accordion comes in. No, not accordion. I just accordion. said accordion because I did I didn't accordion arrange any of those ones. That's awesome. It, it does that have it does have that um pa pa. It's another yeah. example of like mixing in sort of genres with the wrong instruments. Yeah. That Mitsuda does a lot here. Even game. with the oom pa pa though, this is not a Viennese dancey waltz. Right, it's not oh. at all. Like, it doesn't have any of the harmonic fast, yeah. structures or the or the instrumental. I vote to leave Robo, by the way, and take uh, the ladies. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Yeah, do it. Ro also, Robo's a robot. He's cool, like being in the desolate future. <laughs> he's just like shut off for a while, dude. Yeah, right. He's just like cool, yeah. cool. I'll I'll hang out with this old man. What is the instrument? It's like, is it an auto harp almost? Like, what is that, 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 uh, the opening? Bring, bring. I always bring, just assumed that bring. was straight up harp, personally. A harp, yeah. Yeah, straight up orchestral harp. Hmm. But the, We're gonna do Specchio, by the way. 
and then we're going to save in Mystic Town. We're not going to do Hecarim yeah, Cave yeah, yeah. tonight. Ah, yeah, yeah they're, like a lot of these themes, like this one doesn't go anywhere. It kind of spins its wheels. It's it's the same things over and over again. There's a little bit of development into the Oompapa, but it's otherwise very static, which yeah. it's meant to be because like literally and time has stopped. <laughs> literally, yeah. I love the foreshadowing here, by the way. Getting the magic is actually used as an awesome plot device, a hint of what's to come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah. Have. This theme is so good. Oh, you have determination. <laughs> this theme is, is so, so joyful. The you have determination smacks of teenagers with attitude. Yeah. <laughs> you have to think magic, though, Ryan, or you're going to screw it up. <laughs> You have to literally think magic, 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 magic. I did screw it up because I was talking. Sorry. Oh. I'm not magic. Him, yeah. You you weren't thinking about magic. You have to think about magic. <laughs> magic. Magic. I'm thinking about magic really hard right now. It's, yeah. It was my fault before. I wasn't thinking Everybody about Everybody watching, think about it. Thinking, thinking about, about movies. Magic. <laughs> Julia, no, yeah, think, about think about magic. magic. It's so weird. <laughs> magic hoagies. Oh, magic. Wait, is Chrono Chrono's the only one with electric power, right? Yeah. That's correct. The only doubled up element is uh, Marlin water. Frog, right? Yeah. But, but it's, still, it's like, fire. Water it's, ice. it's water ice. It's, it's a little bit of a variation. That's true. That's true. It's because none of their techs are exactly the same. And then, um, what is, uh, what is. I mean, we haven't gotten him yet, but what is Magus? Uh, dark. Like dark. Dark. Okay. dark. Yeah, Magus is shadow, but he can yeah, also cast shadow. fire, ice, and lightning too. Okay. Yeah, he's kind of a. Robo and Isla don't have anything, right? Does Isla have Robo? Anything? Robo gets generic shadow, but all of his stuff is like laser based, basically. Right. Yeah, Robo's Isla's lasers do shadow magic. Yeah. yeah, but she was she was from before magic, so she couldn't get magic. Right. <laughs> I like how the battle music stays happy and upbeat. Like, you know this is not, like, a big deal. Like, you're not you know, really Yeah, you know this is, like... This is, like, a help you battle. Yeah, Unlike in Mega time. Man 3, when, like, you know, Proto Man comes in and you're just like, who is this dick that keeps coming here <laughs> and, like, messing <laughs> with me and yeah. draining my health while I'm trying to do things? And then at the end of the game, you're like, oh, brother, he was just trying to prepare me so I'd be strong enough. Yeah. It's like the big reveal. That's one of my favorite, like, they they give you that whistle, right? Just da -da 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 -da, the kind of bluesy whistle that's associated with him. And then his final theme is this huge, like, expansion on that theme. Culmination yeah. of. That's just such a beautiful beautiful culmination of themes yeah <laughs> hey <laughs> i love that the old man greets you when you as soon as you walk into the room you don't have to talk to him he oh and it's always hey, hey with a, a period it's yeah. not hey hey i really hey, like how the spit it, bubble it, pops it well I actually think this save point is a good spot to stop, and then we'll arrive in the next destination at the beginning of next time's cool. stream. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. But the next dungeon will take too long if we want to end around midnight. Yeah. We basically yeah. stop here, or we continue far too long. So Great. I think we're going to call okay. it for now. Thanks very much for tuning in. I have a blast uh, playing and streaming with you guys, so thank you for agreeing to comment along as we tour yeah. through Chrono Trigger. Yeah, thanks for having us. Chrono Trigger yeah. is an awesome game. Yes, <laughs> I'm glad yes it is. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot to say about the music, too. I felt very oh, uh, yeah. energized as we were like analyzing on the fly. So, oh, yeah. yeah, I feel like we're doing good. Stream for us. All right. It's very important. Uh, have a good night, everybody, on the stream. I'm going to hit stop. All right. Good night. Good night.